What if Naruto had the Reaper's Dojutsu? What if Naruto was blessed with the abilities of his world's Shinigami? How would this impact the trajectory of Naruto's story? Would this change his life for the better or for the worst? In today's Naruto What If Fan Fiction, I'm going to be telling you guys what would happen in the story of the wielder of the Shinigami's eyes, written by Aaron Hansel, and his links will be down below in the description. You guys can find him on, on Wattpad. But if you guys are excited to find out what would happen in today's What If video, definitely make sure to you know hit that like button, seeing as it'll help a ton with YouTube's algorithm. That said, enjoy. Hey Ross, sauce it up. Naruto Uzumaki was being chased by the villagers, and now they had him cornered like a wild animal, with nowhere left to run, and just as he felt like he was going to die from the beatings he would soon receive from the villagers, his heart rate increased, an adrenaline rush flowing through him like nothing he'd ever felt before. The Anbu were on the way, but knew that they would not make it in time. Naruto stood facing his pursuers, and suddenly out of nowhere, a thick, dark, blue aura, which then faded back into Naruto's body appeared, and Naruto said as he stepped closer and closer and closer to the crowd, What's the matter, people? You're acting as though you just saw death itself coming for you. Could it be possible that it's because... Naruto then looked into the eyes of the villagers who now had fear written all over their faces, saw that his eyes were no longer a cereal in blue color, but instead, they were an ominous dark blue with a single white tomoe in each eye, and yelled at the crowd, I am the Shinigami's champion. I exist to judge the souls of man, kind, and you of mankind, and you have all been found guilty in the eyes of death, and as such is your punishment. Naruto then held out his hand and a white blade with a black handle appeared, and Naruto said as he stabbed the blade into the ground, Shinigami art, soul drain. A set of black chains then erupted from the ground and wrapped around all of the villagers and shinobi who were all about to kill Naruto. All of them would have their souls drained from their bodies and sucked into the blade. The Shinigami then appeared before Naruto and said, Greetings Naruto Uzumaki. I am the Shinigami, and you have just unlocked a great power that only you could hope to possess and control. On the night you were born, your parents Kushina Uzumaki and Minato Namikaze, the fourth Hokage and his wife, sealed the QB inside of you using my power. I not only sealed half of the QB inside you, but a small fraction of my power as well. It is an ability known as the Reaper's Eye or the Shinigami God, which is basically a dojutsu. With it, you have all of my abilities. The first one is the ability to judge a person's soul and punish them accordingly. The second ability allows you to see a person's future. The third and final ability allows you to receive a person from the dead who had recently died, but their soul must be pure and they must be innocent. A guilty soul brought back from the dead is a corrupted soul. Now then, cancel the chakra that's being channeled to your eyes and they will return to normal. Naruto did as the Shinigami said, and true enough, his eyes returned to normal. But at least now he knows who his parents are and that they love them. So he then asked, am, am I able to revive my parents from the afterlife? Shinigami, I, I want to meet them be with them so we can be a family again P please tell me is is it possible and then the shinigami said yes you can but like the sharingan eyes you must meet certain requirements to unlock the final form of your bloodline which will appear as a star shaped like cross this is known as the resurrection eye with it you can bring your parents back or anyone who you wish you have my power and the powers of Kami. Use them wisely. 
and keep them hidden. Such powerful abilities are not given to just anyone. We shall meet again, Naruto Uzumaki. Until then, be safe and remember, you are my champion. Make me and Kami proud. The Shinigami then vanished from view with a smile on his face and Naruto decided to go to the Hokage and demand answers, even from the old man. One way or another, he'd get the truth out of him, even if he needs to use his new ability and sword who he called the Spirit Dweller, since it's able to drain the spirits of its victims. 30 minutes later, the Anbu showed up to see that strangely enough, Naruto was unharmed, but the villagers and Shinobi? Not so much. Kakashi and Itachi checked the public for the pulse, but there was none. But what was even stranger is that there was no physical injuries, no stab, no wounds, not even a single drop or puddle of blood. So how could all these people have died if there was no indication of ever being injured? They had to find out what happened to the villagers and the shinobi who attacked Naruto and only had the answer to the numerous questions they were about to ask. The weasel masked Anbu Itachi Uchiha walked up to him and said, Naruto Uzumaki, don't be afraid of us. We're here to protect you. By order of the Hokage himself, would you like to come with us to talk about what happened to your attackers? To you? Naruto said, how can I trust you? I don't trust people who wear masks all the time, and I certainly don't trust the Hokage anymore either. No. He wants to know what happens, he can come and ask me himself. I also know who my parents are. The Shinigami told me everything. I need to know. So, if that senile old man wants to keep secrets from me, then let's just say I'll be doing the same thing to him. Fair is fair, right? An eye for an eye, and a sacrifice for a new Jinchuriki weapon. I'm heading home. Good night, Weasel. As from here, he would say, I hope you enjoy the rest of the festival. Kami knows I can't without being chased and beaten all the time or attacked in my own home. Naruto then started to walk back to his apartment, sticking to the shadows, trying not to be seen by the villagers, and get some deep sleep. He made it back home just in time to get some sleep, only to be woken up by his alarm clock two hours later and go through his daily routine before heading to the academy for another long day of insults, sabotages, and his grades being taken all the way down and being used as a punching bag for the other kids and clan heirs to pick on. The worst part is he had a banshee bitch, Sakura Haruno, and a platinum blonde slut Ino Yamanaka, the diehard Sasuke fangirls to deal with, and he was in no mood for dealing with their stuff today. So sitting next to Sasuke since they got along, well, sort of, they had decided to become friends by being each other's rival. So in a way, they were friends. Naruto just put his head down to get some sleep until class starts, and who should come barreling through the door but the pink banshee and the blondie themselves, as Sakura went up to Naruto and said, Hey Naruto, Baka, find a different seat so Ino and I can sit next to Sasuke-kun. Naruto just groaned still tired and said, Go away, you pink-haired B-word, leave me alone. And Sakura said, What did you just call me? You good-for-nothing loser? And Ino said, Yeah, who do you think you are insulting Sakura like that? You apologize to her right now. And Naruto said, Go away. I'll sit wherever I want, you two-bit whores. Naruto then looked at Sakura and Ino with blood-red eyes and slits for pupils. Naruto didn't know if it was the lack of sleep or if they were getting on his nerves. It was probably both, but either way, Ino and Sakura just backed away in fear of, or rather, what they just saw. And Naruto said as he got up and walked towards Sakura and Ino, Do you want to know why I'm so tired today? Does anyone in this room even know what, the, what last night was? If not, then maybe you should read about the fourth Hokage more. Last night wasn't just the night of the fourth Hokage defeated the Nine Tails. It's also the very same night I was born. The fourth Hokage knew that tailed beasts can't be destroyed, so he sealed it away inside his own son. Me, Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. Tell your parents this when you head home today. Tell them that the son of the fourth Hokage is the container of the QB, and the QB is the contain. That I was to be treated like a hero, and not the fox himself. Just then, the room went silent. So silent you could hear the pin drop, and Iruka then walked in the door and said, Okay class, settle down. And wait, 
Why is it so quiet in here, he would think. Naruto, are you feeling okay? Maybe I should get the Hokage and he could... Iruka just gulped as he looked into Naruto's eyes and felt as though death itself were breathing down his neck. And Naruto said, I'm fine, Sensei. Just a little tired from being chased down and abused by the villagers on my own birthday last night. Could I go home and rest? Oh, and don't bother with getting the Hokage because he's stuck in a council meeting right now. And Iruka said, y y yeah, Naruto, sure, take the rest of the day off and get some sleep. I'll tell the Hokage that. And Naruto said with the QB chakra channel through his eyes and a Shinigami gone flaring, you will tell him nothing or meet your parents in the afterlife, do you understand? Now Iruka was worried about his favorite student. What could have happened to him last night that made him this way? And then he remembered looking over at Sakura and Ino as he said, Ino Yamanaka, Sakura Haruno, front and center. Sakura and Ino went up to their sensei, knowing full well that this was all their fault to begin with, and said, Yes, sensei. And Iruka asked, Did you girls do something to provoke Naruto to go into a fit of rage like that? You saw how tired he was, and you just couldn't leave him alone, could you? All because you want to sit next to Sasuke. Well, guess what? Now you can't, because Naruto went home upon my orders. The two of you will be serving detention for the next two. Actually, make it three weeks after class until you apologize to Naruto. Am I clear? This was a new side of Iruka they'd never seen before. Could everything Naruto said have been true? And if so, is that why they were being punished for trying to force Naruto away from Sasuke, even though they clearly saw the anger and rage in his eyes of being woken up? Did they really poke the beast that much, that Naruto wasn't himself and had every right to be mad at them? Sakura and Ino just stood there and, bowing their heads, said, Yes, Sensei, we understand, and will apologize to Naruto, but I, I mean Naruto-sama tomorrow morning, Sakura said. And Iruka said, Good, because your detention starts today after school lets out. Now then, back to your seats. Sakura and Ino then racked back to their seats, wondering how to go about apologizing to Naruto. Sakura then remembered all the times Naruto had been asking her for a date, and now was as good of a time as any to ask him on a friendly date and have a bowl of ramen noodles with him. As for Ino, well, perhaps she could help Naruto and a certain blue-haired, lavender-eyed girl to get a better acquainted with each other, and maybe even get them to go out for a romantic date together, as she noticed how Hinata would stare at Naruto when he wasn't looking, and he would stare right back. But for some reason, Hinata's self-esteem is so low that she has no real confidence in herself whatsoever. But that ends now, and Sakura was going to help as well. It's the least she could do now that she knew a little bit more about Naruto, and who he really is. Kind of a pity that they have to know all of this for them to finally take care of Naruto and acknowledge him. But at least this time around, Naruto gets better treatment earlier. Now that Naruto was well rested and not tired, as the day before he had decided to go to the academy today and see if anything he had told his classmates had sunk into those thick skulls and underdeveloped brains of theirs. Meanwhile, the Hokage was struggling to keep all the clan heads plus the civilian council and Naruto's grandparents Jiraiya and Tsunade of the Sanin from either adopting the boy in the civilian's council's case. Put him under the clan restoration act, but Jiraiya and Tsunade immediately shot down that idea when they said absolutely not, he's our grandson and we refuse to agree to such a thing. And Hikari Haruno said, He's the fourth Hokage son and last royal heir to the Uzumaki clan. To think that we were all so blind by our hatred towards the QB, we never considered that we'd been neglectful towards the fourth Hokage son. He looks exactly like the fourth Hokage, too. Kushina was my friend, and I'll be damned if I let the rest of the civilian cancel sabotage his evocation and growth as a shinobi. I vote we give the boy his inheritance. Hiruzen then said, very well then, all in favor of Naruto's heritage being released to the public and grant him his inheritance. Half of the civilian council, which was made up of 10 seats plus the village elders raised their hands along with the entire shinobi council, Koharu and Homura. But Danzo Shimura, on the other hand, naturally voted against this decision to keep Naruto's inheritance and said, With all due respect, Hiruzen, my old friend, 
we must take into consideration how much power and potential the boy has, and give him his parents' techniques and fuinjutsu scrolls. Why, that's like giving away free candy to a child who has not earned it, so I vote no. And Haruzen said, I'm sorry, Donzo, but in a majority vote, 14 votes to 6, Naruto Uzumaki, Namikaze, will have his parents' estate and everything within it that was left for him. His heritage shall be released to the public tomorrow afternoon. He shall also be put under his grandparents' care. The council meeting is dismissed, Hiruzen said as he then banged his gavel on the table and said to Jiraiya and Tsunade, The moment Naruto gets out of school, at the academy, the two of you were to pick him up and watch him wherever he goes and whatever he does or needs. Use your toad and slug summons if you must. If a villager so much as bumps into Naruto or calls him anything in reference to the QB, I want to know who, when, where, and why they did it. And Jiraiya said, we understand, Sensei. We're not abandoning him again. Not this time. And Haruzen said, good, because I've kept the secret from him long enough to think that the Shinigami of all beings would bless Naruto the night he was born and give him such a powerful bloodline and tell Naruto the truth about his parents. Hiruzen just shied in annoyance and Jiraiya said, you know, we should have told them sooner, Sensei. If we had, then maybe we wouldn't be in this mess to begin with. Back at the academy, however, Naruto was sitting at an empty table eating his lunch when suddenly something strange happened. People actually wanted to sit next to him. It seems like what he told them yesterday actually made them want to go and get to know him better than they already did. And to his surprise, Sakura, Ino, and Hinata were the first people to join him as he watched and said, Oh hey there Sakura-chan, Hinata-chan, Ino, what do you want? What can I do for you? And Sakura said, Well, um, we want to apologize for bossing you around like we did yesterday, Naruto. And when we asked our parents if what you said was true, then we're sorry. We were wrong in misjudging you like we've been doing so. So I was wondering if you still wanted to go out with me on a friendly date tomorrow afternoon at Ichiraku's Ramen. And Ino is also sorry as well, aren't you? And Ino said, yeah, I'm also deeply sorry for the way I acted. And Naruto said, you know, I'm not as stupid as everyone thinks I am. The teachers sabotage my grades all the time in favor of that Uchiha Sasuke. Don't get me wrong, I don't mind doing it because it keeps the council off of me, but the reason why, I'm com why I compete with Sasuke is because he's everything I've always wanted to have in life. Strong, smart, popular too. Have a family, parents who love you, who care about you, even a single real friend would be nice. But then again, when you are me and you have a demon sealed inside you, living in a village who can't look past that. Sakura, Ino, and Hinata just got out of their seats and Naruto thought they were leaving, but then they did what he didn't expect. They embraced him. The first three people to accept him aside from the Hokage, the Anbu, Iruka, and Ichirakus. He now had friends. True friends. And for once, he couldn't be more happier, as he cried tears of joy and said, Of course I'll forgive you. Thank you. And Sakura... After lunch, do you think you could help me out with my studies? Sakura said, Sure thing, Naruto. I'll even have my mom fire the teachers who sabotage your education. So just tell me who, and my family will take care of them. And Naruto said, Well, the first person is Mizuki-sensei. The second one is the principal of the academy. And those are the people that have repeatedly done that so far. Sakura was rubbing her hands together and grinning like a psychopath. Ino knew that look all too well. It was the look Sakura got when she and her inner self were scheming up something devious and would end quite badly for the other person. Naruto then asked, So, why are you here, Hinata? You normally keep to yourself and don't bother with anyone. Sakura and Ino then said, Go ahead, Hinata. Tell him. Tell him how you feel about him. And Ino said, Yeah, go ahead. Now's your chance. Everyone who knew about Hinata's crush on Naruto were watching with anticipation to see what she would do, and to everyone's shock, she actually confessed. Hinata then said, Well, you, you see, Naruto can. The, the, the thing is, Hinata's face started to turn a very dark shade of red, and then she yelled out, I love you, Naruto Uzumaki, Namikaze. Please go on a date with me. Whatever you want, I'll go with you. And then just before she fainted, Sakura and Ino caught her and placed an ice pack over her head and then looked at Naruto and asked, Well, Naruto, 
What did you say? Will you accept Hinata's request? Naruto was stunned. He couldn't speak. He couldn't think. He didn't know what to feel. Sasuke then came up to Naruto and said as he looked into Naruto's eyes, Hey Naruto, you okay? Come on, answer us. Little did Sasuke know that Naruto was seeing his and Hinata's future together, holding hands, getting married, and having children. But then, then he look at, took a look at Sasuke and said with those weird black eyes that had two Tomoe in each eye, Your clan is attempting a rebellion. Your clan council and the ringleaders while your parents will be used as scapegoats, and your brother Itachi Uchiha forced to kill your entire clan and spare you. His own brother, who he could never harm if he was ordered by the council to do so? Donzo Shimura is the one who will frame your brother and take all the Sharingan from the dead Uchiha bodies, including Shisui Uchiha. Naruto then slapped back into reality and said, What just happened? Did, did I just see the future? Naruto then thought to himself, so the Shinigami was right, I can see other people's future events, and my own. I have to warn the Hokage, but first, I need to answer Hinata's question. I can't believe I was so blind this whole time. The girl of my dreams was in Sakura, it's been Hinata the whole time. And so, Naruto then looked at Hinata and said, Hinata-chan, I would love to go out with you. I mean, if you still want to, that is. Hinata's eyes widened and she then tackled Naruto and said, Yes, yes, a thousand times yes, I still want to go out with you. I don't care about the QB, I only care about you, and I even accept you for who you are and what you carry. Naruto was very happy now, as he had four friends, and one of them truly loved him as more than friends. The school bell rang, indicating that lunchtime was now over, and the class was about to begin, and Naruto said as he stood there waiting for everyone else to leave, said, I know you're there, Lord Hokage, and I know you're watching me with your crystal ball, so you probably already heard everything I said can and will happen. Donzo wants to control the QB, and by extent me, and will steal Shisui Uchiha's eyes to do it. He must be stopped and the Uchiha council killed. It's the only way to keep the entire Uchiha clan alive and their rebellion from happening. And rest assured, you are already on my hit list, so if you have any other secrets you're hiding from me, you know where to find me. Back at the Hokage's office, Hiruzen Saratobi was now curious and frightened by Naruto at the same time. Curious because he wanted to know how Naruto knew he was using his crystal ball, and the fact that he just saw Naruto see a person's future in full details, he truly did have the powers of the death Shinigami. So Hiruzen said, Jiraiya, I want you to find out how he knows about my crystal ball and the Uchiha rebellion. Find out if he truly can't see future events of others. I'm afraid of what should happen when he unlocks the third level of the Reaper's Eye. And Jiraiya said, I'm not sure if that's a good idea, Sensei. If he already knows you're watching him from here and he's there, then he's playing the same game you have been playing with him. And Sarutobi asked, And what game would that be? Jiraiya. And Jiraiya said, He's keeping secrets from you the same way you've been keeping secrets from him. He's playing the game of deception, and quite good at it too, may I add. Now, it was the time for the Hokage to see the blind truth, as his eyes widened and he banged his head over the desk, the whole time saying, Stupid, stupid, stupid. No, how is that even possible? How could an 11 year old fool me so easily? And Jiraiya said, The kid's not stupid, and you're growing old, Sensei, and quite possibly senile also. The kid's not dumb. He knows this already, and has taken advantage of you more than you have him. Quite ironic, isn't it, old man? Ever since Naruto had unlocked his new bloodline and was able to now see the future of anyone who he saw or even came in contact with, he started meditating to better control it, and sure enough, he was getting better and better at doing it so. In fact, it was through these meditation sessions that he met the QB, and as they talked, the QB started to take an interest in Naruto and decided to help train him. After telling Naruto his true name is Kurama, they decided to start new training with his sword, and Kurama said, Okay, Naruto, first things first, you should know that your sword is no ordinary sword. It is what's known as a Zanpakuto. You named it the Spirit Dweller. But when the time comes, the sword will reveal its true name to you, as well as its form. Do you understand me so far? Naruto nodded his head yes, and the QB continued and said, Now then, as an Uzumaki, 
The art of sealing and kenjutsu should come naturally to you, but you must first learn the basics. I can teach you, but you must pay close attention and do not question me. Do you understand? Naruto nodded his head yet, yes, again, and said, I promise, I'll do whatever you say without question, Kurama sensei. And Kurama said, good, we start tomorrow. Now then, don't you have a lunch date with your friend Sakura? And Naruto said, y you're right, I do. Thanks, Kurama. See you tomorrow. Naruto then disappeared from his mind and returned to the real world. He then realized that Sakura was waiting for him to start their study session and so, all throughout their lunch break and weekends, Sakura would help Naruto where he needed it most, which to Sakura's surprise was just about everything, from math to history, chakra control, and even basic ninjutsu training. His romantic dates with Hinata also helped him greatly as it helped him gain the support of the Hyuga, and by extent, thanks to his future side abilities, as everyone was calling it, also had the Uchiha clan on his side as well. Things were going well for Naruto, and would only got better, when he made the Hokage the biggest announcement ever, and would shake the village to its very core. Meanwhile, we find the third Hokage Hiruzen Sarutobi, Jiraiya, and Tsunade of the Sunning, along with the Hokage's advisors Ko Koharu, Homura, and Danzo. Hiruzen's about to make the biggest announcement ever, and the villagers would soon see Naruto much differently. Afterwards, and so seeing as the entire village was gathered, he decided to start by saying, People of Konoha Village, I thank you all for coming here today, for I have an important announcement to make. He then paused to let the villagers talk amongst themselves, and when it all calmed down, a random civilian asked, And just what exactly is this important announcement, Lord Hokage? Another random villager then said, Yes, please tell us! And Haruzen said, Are you sure you all want to know so badly that you would even face death himself to hear it? As there was a big silence. Now, the villagers were sweating, and the entire crowd went completely just dim, completely silent. This caught Haruzen's attention, and he said, Very well, then I shall tell you. This, a certain blonde hair and blue-eyed boy is always being hurt, beaten, chased down, and hunted like an animal. This boy is Naruto Uzumaki Namakaze, son of the fourth Hokage Minato Namakaze and Kushina Uzumaki. You have all been abusing an innocent child for containing the nine tails, but ask yourself this, what would happen if you actually succeeded in killing him? Jiraiya then stepped forward and said, You're all a bunch of imbeciles. Had any of your attempts to kill my grandson succeeded, the nine tails would have been released, and you'd all be dead. Minato Namikaze was my best student, and a seal master, and you all disgrace his and Kushina's sacrifice by not treating their own son like a true hero for containing the nine tails. Instead, you treat him like the very demon he contains. Silence had just fallen upon the village as they began to regret what they had done to Naruto and the hero of the village since birth. Seeing this, Tsunada decided to step up and said, You bastards have the nerve to call him a monster when after reading all of his medical files, the only monsters I see here are the ones right in front of me. Naruto Uzumaki Namakaze is the very last Uzumaki clan member alive and of the royal Uzumaki clan family. You should all be ashamed of yourselves. There is a literal law written by my grandfather, the first Hokage, that any and all forms of abuse to a clan heir of royal or noble blood may decide the punishment of the abuser. In other words, you're all guilty in the eyes of the Senju and Uzumaki clan family. But your punishment isn't for me to decide. It's Naruto's decision. Pray to Kami that he'll be merciful to you all. Hiruzen then said, Well... You all heard what she just said. The first Okage's law has been invoked. You have until his next birthday to make amends with Naruto Uzumaki and treat him the way that anyone would else would want to be treated. That is all for now. You're all dismissed. The crowd then left thinking about what to do now that they know who Naruto really is and that all of them were on the chopping block. Because now that a Senju clan member, no, make that the last Senju clan member and Naruto's grandmother Snotty Senju had invoked the first Hokage's law about abusing a clan heir and they knew he could either have killed them or imprisoned for life or worse, request that the dumb daimo cut funding for their businesses. 
The village was now in a state of panic and just did the only thing that they could at this point and that was praying for their lives to be spared. Meanwhile, up in the heavens, Kami had just fallen flat on her back laughing so hard she felt like she was going to die and then come back as Naruto's mother as she continues laughing and said, I can't believe what I'm hearing, all those incense begging me to do for them. <laughs> oh please Kami-sama, let Naruto forgive us, let Naruto forgive us, Kamis, please spare me and my family. I beg of you Kami-sama, find it in your heart to have Naruto-sama forgive us. We're sorry for harming your son Lady Kushina, Lord Forth, please forgive us. Kami then turned to Shinigami and asked, did you plan all of this happening and made sure you gave him the power to protect himself? Did you know that all this was going to be one of, one of many end results? Shinigami just chuckled and nodding his head said, Indeed I did. So while sealing the QB inside of him, I gave him a small portion of my power, and yours as well. Kami just started laughing again and said, Wow, you practically turned him into a god Shinigami. I'm impressed and fully approve of this decision. Shinigami then bowed and said, As I knew you would. Thank you, Kami-sama. Shall we grant these insects their prayers, or shall we let our champion decide their fate? And Kami said, this is an affair of mortals, not immortals. Shinigami, uh, not immortal Shinigami, and you know our laws, that gods don't interfere with the affairs of humans unless necessary. So no, for now, we'll let Naruto take care of it, as we simply sit back and watch the show. Chapter 4, Naruto recognizes the village savior. When word got out to the other villagers that Naruto was the fourth Hokage's son and last royal heir to the Uzumaki clan, well, let's just say that Hiruzen, Jiraiya, and Tsunade along with the entire village council had a QB-sized headache, and like the QB, wasn't so easily gotten rid of by normal means, we now had to find what the third Hokage and grandparents Jiraiya and Tsunade of the Sanin going through the paperwork and watching them all groaning in irritation as the three large stacks of alliance, trade agreement, and political marriage forms in front of them, as uh, of them, Naruto said, you do know that there's an easy way to get through all of this paperwork before nightfall, right? Their eyes just widened, and Haruzen said, more like begged, saying, please Naruto, tell us, tell us, and we'll do whatever you want. Naruto then said, all right, step aside and let me see the forbidden scroll of sealing. If I'm right, then the secret is right in there. And so, watching to make sure Naruto didn't scroll the, the scroll, Haruzen handed Naruto the scroll out on the floor, browsing through it, and said, Aha! I knew that. That was Dad's secret to paperwork. Looks like you had it with you this whole time. Look. Naruto then points to a certain clones technique, and the Hokage said shocked he didn't think of that before. Shadow clones! Why didn't I think of that? Stupid, stupid old age. Thank you, Naruto. You're a lifesaver. And as a reward, I'll let you have the Shadow Clone technique and its secrets, plus one and only one other jutsu from the scroll. And Naruto said, I already know which other ones I want from the scroll, and that's the Rasengan and Hiraishin jutsu. They're my birthright, aren't they? And Haruzen said, Yes, they are. And you may have them. And Naruto then interrupted and said, Hey, look at this. There's something written here by a person named Mito Uzumaki that says, This scroll of forbidden seals is a sole property of the Uzumaki clan, and the borrowed property of the Hidden Leaf Village should at least one Uzumaki clan member remain in Konoha. That person by all rights may take the scroll back at any time if they see fit. After hearing what was written in the very first page of the scroll, Hiruzen started banging his head against the wall and said, Damn it! Curse you, Mito Uzumaki. Now I have no other choice but to give Naruto the entire scroll. And Jiraiya said, Please, Sensei, calm down. There's gotta be some way to get. And Tsunade said, Jiraiya, I'd know my grandma Mito's handwriting anywhere, and that's definitely her handwriting. It seems she didn't really trust the future generations of Kanoha or their Hokages. Sorry, Jiraiya, but by all accounts, the entire Forbidden Scroll of Sealing now rightfully belongs to Naruto. And even though I hate to give such a dangerous secrets to the kid, maybe we can give it to him. After he graduates from the academy. What do you say, Naruto? Naruto gave it some thought for a moment and said, Alright, but there's very dark and dangerous jutsu in here that should be destroyed. The Edo Tensei. From what I can tell, it allows the user to... Oh no. 
I have to contact the Shinigami immediately. And Jiraiya said, he can summon the Shinigami? And Saruto said, don't ask, just watch. And so, Naruto activated his Reaper Eye and using the Summoning Jutsu said, Summoning Jutsu, Shinigami. A blue spectral figure appeared and said, Greetings, Naruto-sama. What may I do for you, my champion? And Naruto then bowed on one knee and said, Contact Kami-sama. We need to destroy the seal right away. Shinigami then pulled out a golden bell and after that, Kami appeared. In all her beautiful glory and Naruto said, Bow, you idiots. Bow before the goddess of life the go and god of death. Jiraiya, Tsunade, and Hiruzen all did as they were told and Kami asked, Shinigami, why have you called me? And Shinigami said, take a look at the second seal in the scroll in front of us. Tell me what you see. Kami did as asked and her eyes widened and she said, that jutsu should never have been created to begin with. I'm glad you called us, Naruto. Thank you. And Naruto said, when it confirms tampering with life and death any time. Mistress Kami and Lord Shinigami. And Shinigami said, you have done well in showing this to us, young champion of life. Now, let's begin. Kami and Shinigami then pulled out a pair of Marty grass beads and rubbing them together, they began to glow. After which, the beads were placed on top of each other and as the seals of Edo Tensei root ritual vanished from existence, as if it was never created. They then picked up their beads and said, It is done. The impure reincarnation jutsu no longer exists. We shall be going once again. We thank you, champion of ours. The two then disappeared and Naruto said, You may rise, and I'm certain that you have many questions, so let's just skip to the answers. Naruto then summoned his spirit dweller sword and stabbed it into the floor and said, Kami art, memory projection and a blinding white light then appeared throughout the entire room, and Naruto's memories were displayed for all to see as if they were watching some sort of movie. All of his recent memories from the night he was attacked to the next morning where he lost his temper at his classmates and put them in their place. To say that they were surprised was an understatement. They were amazed at how Naruto could communicate with the Shinigami and Kami to learn how his bloodline works and that he could use it to predict the future. Jiraiya then said, That's the most incredible thing that I, I've ever seen. Jiraiya then fainted and Tsunade said, well nothing would surprise me at this point and Naruto said, it gets better because Shinigami said that when I unlock the final stages of the Reaper Eye, it becomes the Resurrection's Eye. Now Tsunade could faint and so she did and Naruto said, oh and Hokage-sama, enjoy the Shadow Clone Jutsu and thanks for the scroll that rightfully belongs to me. I expect to have it the day I graduate the academy. Chapter 5 Naruto Cast Judgment on the Village The next few days went pretty strange for Naruto as he noticed that the villagers would either greet him with a genuine smile or ask him how his day was, and yet, somehow, enjoyed it. And as he was walking home from the academy, he noticed that the entire shinobi and civilian population were waiting there for him, and his first natural reaction was to just wait and see what happens next. But after 10 minutes of waiting, he realized that they were there to help him as a random villager said, Please forgive us all, Naruto-sama. If you have any kindness in your heart, please let us do what we can to help the hero of the village since first. We have misjudged you for far too long, and we can change. Just give us a chance. Naruto thought it was interesting to say the least. Maybe, maybe he should give them a chance to prove themselves and change how they've been. So looking at the villagers and shinobi, he said, I've always been a forgiven person, so I'm willing to give you all a second chance to prove that you can change. I never held hatred for you people, only pity and sadness, so you're all forgiven. Naruto then noticed that the villagers all had his furniture and belongings packed up and ready to move, so he asked as the Hokage stepped forward, what's going on here, am I being moved to somewhere else? And Haruzen said, yes Naruto, you are. We're going to be moving you into your parents' house. It's in the clan district, not far from the academy. Why? Naruto said. Oh no. Oh, no reason. It's just a surprise to me, that's all. And I didn't know that I was left with my own home to live in. And so with that, Naruto was going to pick up one of the boxes. When another villager said, Please, Naruto-sama, don't overexert yourself. Let me help you with that. And Naruto said, Thanks. 
I'm glad you're all having second thoughts about everything that happened in the past, but I have no real reason to be mad at you people. You were angry at the QB, not realizing that you were hurting me, and once again, the villagers were thankful that Naruto's kind nature let him put the past aside, and they accepted their apologies and let them help him. When they reached his parents' house, Naruto was surprised at how beautiful and big it was. It was a two-story house with a stone foundation and decorative red tiles for the roof and a beautiful flower garden that went down both sides of the stone walkway. As they opened the door, Naruto was impressed. The floors were hardwood, the furniture was all new as if it was never used, and the kitchen had a full-size kitchen and a stove with an overhead microwave, cabinets, and a gorgeous white floor. The tiles were amazing. The master bedroom had a full-size bed and closet, which is where he guessed his parents slept in, and two mid-sized guest rooms. All in all, to be honest, it was the most beautiful place he's ever seen. By the time he'd finished looking around, the Hokage and villagers had already finished moving his things into his house and set everything up. Jiraiya and Tsunade then walked in and said, Hey Naruto, do you know who we are? Naruto just nodded his head no, and Tsunade said, we're your grandparents. I'm Tsunade, and this, this is Jiraiya. Your parents wanted us to take care of you, and we hope you'll let us. You've been alone and fending for yourself for too long now. Naruto couldn't speak. Instead, he just grabbed Tsunade and Jiraiya and cried into their soldiers, their shoulders. And Tsunade said, I'm sorry we left you alone, kid. But we're back now, and we're going to be staying here for you. Always. Naruto had finally cried himself to sleep, and Tsunade said, Thank you everyone for your help. I'm going to put him to bed now, and I hope you will be more kind to him from now on. And the entire crowd of people said, We will, Lady Tsunade. We swear to Kami on our lives. We will give Naruto-sama only the best of everything he deserves. And so, Tsunade then walked to Naruto up to his bedroom and laid him in bed, tucked him in, and kissed him goodnight. Jiraiya and Tsunade naturally decided to take the master bedroom, which was just down the hall from Naruto's bedroom, in case he was having a hard time sleeping or nightmares. Meanwhile, up in the heavens, Kami and Shinigami were impressed with how well Naruto had handled the situation, and adapted to his new lifestyle. And Kami said, Well then, I guess we don't need to intervene for now at least. His bloodline? It's improving at a rapid rate. In another year or so, he will have unlocked the final stage of the Reaper's Eye and be truly known as the Grim Reaper of Kanoha. What did you say, Shinigami? And the Shinigami said, He will indeed be a very powerful shinobi. And as I've noticed, he doesn't always rely on his bloodline like the Uchiha clan or Hyuga clan does. He doesn't take the easy way out of a situation. He enjoys working hard to get results. That's why I gave him our power. Because with a pure heart and a noble mind, he could accomplish anything. He sets his mind to. Chapter 6 The Spirit Dweller's True Name Naruto and Kurama were currently training in his mindscape, and let's just say that Naruto was performing quite well, and took to Kenjutsu and Fuinjutsu like a fish to water. He was a natural prodigy, and was only getting better with more and more training. Currently, we find Naruto clashing swords with Kurama and the Shinigami, to Naruto's surprise. When he found out the seal holding back Kurama was powered by the Shinigami himself and offered to teach Naruto how to control his ability to control the to predict the future and work with him on learning the true name of his Zanpakuto, they were halfway through their training session when suddenly Naruto heard two voices and then his sword began to glow, after which it split into two weapons and a reaper scythe and a whip with spikes around it as Naruto looked behind him and saw a man and a woman. Kurama and the Shinigami bowed before these two people, and Naruto felt like he should also. The woman then spoke and said, Greetings, I am Izanami, and this is Izanagi. We are the spirit that lives within your sword. I Izanagi? Then spoke and said, You are Naruto Uzumaki, correct? Naruto just nodded his head, and Izanagi continued, We are the first gods to rule the land, and my whip along with Izanami's scythe will let you contact many souls. As the Shinigami's champion, we shall tell you how. 
Izanami then said, To use my scythe, you need only speak my name, and to call upon Izanaki and his whip, you need only to speak his name, and our abilities vary depending on whose soul you've collected. For example, if you were to use my scythe on a powerful enemy, all of their skills and abilities would become your own. Izanagi then said, and if you were to capture someone with my whip, you could drain their power and life force, making it your own while healing you in the process. Naruto was amazed at how much power the weapons he now possessed contains, and said, I will use your abilities wisely, and only for the purest of intentions, to protect people who have sinned and deserve death. Izanagi and Izanami then smiled and said, We already know that you will. We've always known. You have chosen. We've always known. You have chosen your champion well, Shinigami-sama. Shinigami then said, Thank you, Lord Izanagi. Lady Izanami, I have faith in him and he's not yet disappointed me or Kami. The two great deities then disappeared, and the two weapons became one yet again. Naruto then woke up and headed to the academy, the next day with a smile on his face. For once, he's got family. For once, he's got people who care about him, and now the entire village would know who he was as a shinobi. He would soon be to the world as the Grim Reaper. Of, as, as the enemies of Kanoha would fear him and allies would worship him, like a deity. But unlike the Uchiha clan, he was too humble to let the powers he possessed go to his head. Speaking of which, we now find Sasuke Uchiha next to a well-rested Naruto, who thanks to Sakura's help was doing much better academically, and as far and as for his taijutsu training, sorry, and chakra control, he could now perform medical ninjutsu and practiced on Jiraiya almost every chance he got when Tsunade caught him peeking in on the lady's hot springs and beat the hell out of him. Naruto enjoyed the real life, medical training with his grandmother, but poor Jiraiya didn't since he was always the one being tested on. But Tsunade just said, quit staring at women like, like a, hold on, like a, where was I, where was I, like a piece of meat and perhaps I will you old pervert. Jiraiya just looked at Tsunade and said, you know that would be great if you just went out with me for one date, but if you don't give up on gambling, then I won't stop peeking on the woman's hot springs. And Tsunade said, that's a low blow even for you, Jiraiya. You know I love gambling. Naruto was getting annoyed with his grandparents and said, hey, doesn't my opinion matter here? And besides, I'm willing to make a bet with the both of you. Tsunade just smirked and said, you see, Jiraiya, even Naruto's considering gambling. Okay, Naruto, what's the bet? Tsunade would soon regret those words, and Naruto said, I'm willing to bet that if you guys go out on a date together and enjoy it, you both have to give something up. For Grandma, it's gambling, and Grandpa, peeking on the woman's hot spring. But, if neither of one of you enjoyed it, then you both get to keep what you enjoy most. Deal? Tsunade and Jiraiya were speechless. It's like the devil just came in and asked for what makes them human. They looked at each other knowing that this was the only way to settle their differences, and Tsunade said, Fine. And just how long is it going to be if we have to give up our hobby? And Naruto said, until I graduate the academy. Silence fell upon them. What? You can't be serious, they said together. And Naruto said, as serious as a heart attack. They just sighed in defeat and said, deal. Which now brings us back to why Naruto was so happy. Because tonight was the night that Jiraiya and Tsunade went on their date. And he's eager to see what was going to happen. He got home and noticed a smile on both Jiraiya and Tsunade and said, Let me guess, you enjoyed your date, didn't you? And Jiraiya said, You bet we did. I'm surprised that in just one, one night, on a date away from our distractions, that was able to bring us closer again. Thanks, kid. And Tsunade said, Now then, a deal's a deal, I guess. So we're giving up on gambling and picking on women, right, Jiraiya? And Jiraiya said, You bet, Tsunade. And Tsunade from here asked, So, Naruto, is there anything we can do for you, since you obviously have something, or someone on your mind? A girl, perhaps? Maybe even Hiyashi Hyuga's daughter Hinata? Naruto then said with his reaper eye activated, My love life shouldn't be a concern to you at the moment. Focus on your own love life first, and if there's any improvement, then we can talk about my love life. Until then, stay out of it. They just sighed and said, Fine, but we're going to find out one way or another. You know that, don't you? 
and Naruto said, keep trying and you might be the next ones to meet the Shinigami and my parents in the afterlife. And Jiraiya said, maybe we can talk about it after you graduate, right? We just want what's best for you, not us. So what do you think? And Tsunade said, I tell you what, if Jiraiya and I are married before you graduate, you have to tell us everything about your love life. Since you have helped ours, we'll help you with yours. And Naruto just walked up to his room and said, I'll think about it. And Jiraiya said, he's going to make us wait until he graduates, isn't he? And Tsunade said, I'm afraid so, Jiraiya. I'm afraid so. Tsunade huffed in annoyance, knowing how juicy information like that would be, so they decided to forget about it, for now at least. And so, after that night, everything went as normal. Naruto went to the academy, Jiraiya managed his spy network with the toads and Tsunade was working at the hospital. Then, when school lets out, they would pick Naruto up from the academy and walk home together, while they formed a plan to see what Naruto decided about their little bet. So Tsunade asked, So Naruto, about the deal we made? Have you decided yet? Naruto said, I've given it some thought, and if you can get married by the last year of my academy, I might tell you who I'm interested in. But no later than that. And Jiraiya and Tsunade nodded to each other and said, Deal. Naruto knew that they were planning on this. He'd seen that luck before, and knew that eventually, he'd win the bet. So he decided to ask, So Grandpa Jiraiya, how much of my, gran how, how much of my parents' money did you spend on the diamond ring for Grandma Tsunade? Jiraiya just froze in place and said, How did you know about that, Naruto? And Naruto said, Oh please, you don't think I'm that stupid, do you? I consistently monitor their bank accounts for anything missing. Like say, 10,000 Ryu? for a diamond ring shaped like the Senju family crest with the Uzumaki clan spiral next to it and Jiraiya said damn it i knew i wasn't going i knew i was going to regret that eventually and Tsunade asked what's he talking about Jiraiya what ring and Naruto said the one he's going to give you tonight after dinner it's in his shinobi pouch right now and Tsunade said show me Jiraiya show me the ring and Jiraiya said here way to spoil the moment Naruto with Naruto saying Hey, I'm always one step ahead of you guys. Try to keep up. Jiraiya then pulled out a little black box and said, Will you, Tsunade send you? Marry me and be my first wife? Tsunade couldn't believe the size of the diamond. It had to be 10 carats at least. The band itself looks like solid gold. Tsunade had tears of joy in her eyes and said, Yes, Jiraiya, of course I'll marry you. And a deal is a deal, Naruto. You lost a bet, and now... Naruto then said, actually, neither of you won. I did. I said no later than my graduation. I never said how soon, so technically, I win. Checkmate. I already knew that you were going to try and plan something like this, so I compensated for that by telling you how long you would have to wait, not how soon. Jiraiya and Tsunade couldn't even believe it. He played them, like a violin again. Jiraiya and Tsunade then said, you played us again, you brat. And Naruto just casually said, Yeah, I did. And guess what? It was worth every penny. Wouldn't you say, old man? And Haruzen said, Guess I lost the best, didn't I? Curse you, the Uzumaki clan, and your good fortune. And Naruto said, That's what you get uh, when you make a deal with the devil. Now pay up. And Haruzen said, Fine, as promised. 10,000 Ryu. That should cover what Jiraiya took from your parents' bank account. Tsunade and Jiraiya couldn't believe it. The kid's far too lucky. They then said, You bet on us getting engaged? And Naruto said, Is there a reason why you think I shouldn't have? Besides, it's funny seeing the shock looks on your faces every time. And then they both said, Get back here, you brat, so we can beat the crap out of you. And Naruto said, You're gonna have to find me first. Poof. Naruto then in front of them disappeared, and Jiraiya said, Damn it. He was a shadow clone the whole time? Ah, now we have to find him. Haruzen then chuckled and said, Indeed you won't, and good luck catching him. When you do, he's already running out my best onbu in me. His stealth skills are trapping, and trapping making skills are quite exceptional for his age. He could even be watching us right now, but we wouldn't be able to find him. He's learned to suppress his chakra to practically zero, and avoid capture for 12 hours straight. Again, good luck with your search. Hiruzen then left and went back to the tower where he found Naruto organizing some files, cleaning his office for him, and said, You do know this is why I have a secretary, Naruto, but thank you nonetheless. I appreciate it. And Naruto said, No problem. Hey, have they found me yet? And Hiruzen said, 
No, just your shadow clones. That was quite clever, I must admit. I didn't think they would actually get engaged to each other. And Naruto said, they never gave each other a reason to. And so, now we find a tired and exhausted Jirai and Tsunade back home fast asleep in bed wrapped around each other. As Naruto watched them sleep, he then left to go to his bedroom window and said, Good, they're too tired to have sex. All according to plan. Soon, they will be struggling with wedding arrangements and that's when the beatings turned even sweeter for me and more sour for them. He then went to bed and fell asleep to get up for school the next day. <clears throat> Chapter 7 Time Skip The Mission to Wave Country Naruto, Kakashi, and the rest of Team 7, Hinata Hyuga, and Sasuke Uchiha were in the Hokage's office, waiting for their first C-ranked mission. I'm guessing this is a little bit of a time skip after the events that happened in the last part, and Hiruzen Sarutobi the third Hokage said, ah, yeah, Team 7. I have an escort mission to the wave of country for you. You are to safely escort the bridge builder to home to his home country, and should the mission escalate to a higher rank, I immediately call for re I you should immediately call for reinforcements. Am I clear, Kakashi? Kakashi saying, Yes, Lord Hokage. Okay, gang. Head home and pack for a month long journey. Naruto then said, Hokage Gigi, may I meet the client with you alone? Hiruza noticed the seriousness in Naruto's voice and said, Very well, my boo. Please send in Tazuna. Just then, a man with a straw hat who reeked of alcohol and carried a sake bottle in his hand said, What's this? I asked you to bring me strong ninja to protect me, and you give me a lazy pervert blue haired girl with a self esteem issues and a blonde idiot who probably couldn't. Hiruza noticed that Naruto's killing intent was steadily rising and had to ta save Tazuna before he said something he would regret. He then looked at Tazuna and said, I can assure you, Tazuna, they are more than qualified to be your bodyguards, especially the blonde haired idiot has more power in his left hand than his teammates have in their entire body. Kakashi, you and your other students are dismissed. Naruto, I, Naruto and I must have a heart to heart chat about the mission. And Kakashi said, as you wish, Lord Hokage. Tazuna then sat down in front of the Hokage and Naruto and said, so what do you want to know? And Naruto said, Tell us why you're lying about your mission rank. You wouldn't need Shinobi to protect you if someone hadn't sent Shinobi after you. So tell us, why did you lie? And Tazuna said, please forgive me. Our, our country is in a state of poverty because of the ruthless business tyrant named Gato. We've only had enough money for a C rank mission when it's more of an A rank mission. Please don't turn away our request. I have a daughter and grandson to take care of. Hiruza noticed that Naruto had his reaper's eyes activated, searching for any hint of lie or deception. He then asked and said, Well, Naruto, did you find any lies in the story with your reaper's eye? And Naruto said, Not at all, Hokage Gigi. But the cost of our services have just gone up. If you're willing to sign a trade agreement with the Hidden Leaf Village, then we will accept your request for protection. And Tazuna said, Kid, you have yourself a deal. And Hiruzen said, Excellent, Naruto. You may leave while Tazuna and I drop in a trade agreement between Wave Country and the Hidden Leaf. Naruto then walked out of the office, and just before he closed the door, he looked over his shoulder at Tazuna and said, I hope you aren't keeping any other secrets from us, or I will get them out of you, and not in a good way. He then closed the door and went home to pack his tools and resources, including a pop-up tent for camping, and Tazuna would then ask, if you don't mind me asking, Lord Hokage, What's with that kid's attitude? He's definitely got trust issues, that's certain. But what makes someone as young as him so cold-hearted? And Haruzen said, Naruto Uzumaki had many secrets that he could put himself and those close to him in danger. And it's for that reason that he tries to distance himself from those who he doesn't fully trust. So do try to be honest with him or he will have the death god pay you a small visit. And Tazuna said, right, I got it. The kid's got him secrets and doesn't want to put others in danger. I understand. Meanwhile, back at the Namikaze Senju home, Jiraiya and Tsunade were too busy helping Naruto pack for his mission, and Jiraiya and Tsunade gave him one final hug goodbye and wished him good luck. He was about to leave before he turned around and said, Oh, and don't forget that if you try to have beep while I'm away, I'll personally cut off your testicles and feed them to the Inazuka hounds as a treat with my spirit dweller sword. And Grandma Tsunade, should you try to get pregnant before I get home, I will personally have the Shinigami rip the unborn child's soul. Am I clear? 
Tsunade put her hands over her stomach and Jiraiya covered his manhood, knowing that Naruto had always held true to his word and they wanted to live for a future. So Tsunade then said, Jiraiya, I don't care how much you beg or plead or get down on your knees, I actually want to keep both of my eggs inside me. Sorry, but until Naruto says otherwise, no beep for you. You understand me? We need to think about Naruto first. After he's married and started his own family, I'll consider it, but not until Naruto's at least married, when he makes Chunin, so don't get any funny ideas. And Jiraiya said, alright, alright, I get it. The kid's got abandonment issues and doesn't want to be ignored. But haven't we done enough for him already? Don't we deserve some kind of happiness to ourselves? And Tsunade said, I'm perfectly happy taking care of Naruto, Jiraiya. Minato and Kushina put us in charge of him the night he was born 12 years ago. And what did we do? We did the very thing he's worried we'd do behind his back again. We abandoned him and you want us to repeat the same mistake all over again? Absolutely not. We will wait until Naruto comes back from his mission and talk with him about it. And that's final. Jiraiya just sighed in defeat, knowing that there was pretty much no point in arguing with Tsunade at this point since she was pretty much always correct. It would be a bad idea to try having children without talking to Naruto about it first. Not to mention, Naruto would probably feel some type of betrayal towards him and worry about being ignored and kill them without even a second thought. Jiraiya just shivered at that thought and said, I guess you're right, Tsunade. We'll talk about it with Naruto when he gets back from the wave mission. And Tsunade said, I'm glad you finally decided to see things my way for once. She then kissed him on the cheek and went to cook lunch as Jiraiya just returned home to write his novels and The Art of Sealing, as he just hoped that this conversation they were going to have would come sooner than later and would go smoother. Otherwise, it's bye bye to little Jiraiya and Tsunade. Chapter 8 We immediately start our story off with a time skip. Kakashi and Zabuza were about to kill each other and finish the battle once and for all when suddenly, Naruto watches helpless as Haku's life was taken from her as Naruto saw his, sen his sensei put a Chidori through her chest. Not intentionally, of course, but Naruto didn't know that, so he went over to Haku's dying body and said, Haku Yuki, by the powers gifted to me, the goddess of life and death, I call upon your spirit and I command you to be revived. Naruto then places his hands over Haku's chest, her body glowed white, blinding Zabuza and Kakashi, and the next thing they knew, Haku was back in from the dead. As Haku breathed in a gasp of air into her lungs, she asked Master Zabuza, what happened? I thought Kakashi-san killed me. And Zabuza said, I'm not sure what that blonde haired kid did, but you were brought back to life because of him. Zabuza then said, hey kid, what did you do for Haku that brought her back to life? And Naruto said, I can't tell you how I did it, but you should get everyone else away from here, now. Kakashi took one look into Naruto's eyes and saw for the very first time in his life, Naruto's bloodline, the Reaper's eyes. And with widened eyes of fear and, and of surprise, um, of, of fear of dying as well, Kakashi said, Zabuza, we're going to be leaving now. Gato then said, well, that's a shame. The big bad demon of the mist running from a fight. Seems like you aren't as strong as you said. <laughs> and Zabuza said, I'm scared of someone, Gato, but it's not one of your bandits, and you're not getting your hands on Haku or the other Genin. Let's go. Kakashi isn't that. K Let's go, Kakashi would say. And suddenly, Kaka uh, Zabuza would ask, Isn't the blonde Gaki coming with us? And Kakashi said, Just stand back and watch the show, Zabuza. You're about to see the Grim Reaper of Konoha in action. Naruto's sword isn't any ordinary weapon. It's a Zanpakuto, a spirit blade. And Zabuza said, "Didn't you just say? Did you just say he's got a spirit blade? Which one?" And Kakashi said, "You're about to find out." Back with Gato and his bandits, Naruto stood there unmoving and not saying anything. Gato then said, "What's the matter, kid? Cat got your tongue, or maybe you're just scared because you're outnumbered a thousand to one." And Naruto just said, as he drew his spirit dweller blade and said. Shinigami art, chains of judgment. Hundreds of spectral trains then appeared and wrapped around Gato and his men. The chains were a part of his bloodline. As Naruto said, only one set of the words and that was, your souls have been judged. The verdict is guilty. And now, now, you die. 
Spirit Dweller, Izanami. The bandits and Gato struggled to get free from the chains, but they couldn't. And Zabuza watched in amazement as Naruto's katana turned into a scythe. And Sasuke also saw this and said, Kakashi Sensei, I want that weapon. Such a powerful sword doesn't deserve to be used by that loser. And Kakashi said, I'm sorry, Sasuke, but that sword isn't normal. Anyone else who has tried to take that from Naruto, even the Okage has almost died. No physical wounds, no injuries, or even any bloodshed. You lose your, your soul, Sasuke. The cost of another person besides Naruto, not chosen by it, loses their soul to the Shinigami. Back with Naruto, however, and his Izanami scythe, Naruto was currently cutting down one bandit after another as he said anger in his eyes and a rage clear in his voice. Murderers, rapists, thieves, corruption at its worst, you're all guilty in the eyes of Kami. I am Naruto Uzumaki, champion of Kami and the Shinigami, Grim Reaper of Konoha. As Naruto was venting out all of his rage and anger, the Shinigami and Kami were watching him from him from the heavens for their thrones with a bag of chips and popcorn in hand. As Naruto slaughtered one guilty soul after another, and Shinigami said, it won't be long before he's unlocked the resurrection eyes, the final stages of our power. He's come quite far actually. We've chosen well, haven't we? As Kami would say, yes Shinigami, we most certainly have chosen well indeed. Back on Earth, Naruto had just finished cutting off the heads of a thousand bandits and was now in front of Gato. As Gato said, no, please, don't kill me. I'll, I'll give you anything you want. Fame, fortune, jewels, your own island, name it. Name it and I'll give it to you. And Naruto said, your soul and your head are payment enough for me to get what I want. Swinging his blade as a thump would be heard on the ground as Gato's head would get cut off from his shoulders and his head would roll down to Naruto's feet. Naruto then said, People of Wave Country, your freedom has been brought back to you. The gods smile upon you this day. Celebrate now and never live in fear again. Rise up when the time to take a stand arises. Gato was dead. Tazuna then said, I, I can't believe it. We're, we're finally freed from Gato. We're free, everybody. The entire crowd burst into cheers of congratulations and excitement. And Zabuza then asked, So what now, Kakashi? Your mission is to protect the bridge builder and Haku and I aren't under contact with Gato anymore. Kakashi said, you could always rejoin Kiri or you could join Konoha's ranks. Whatever you choose, just remember who you owe your life to, Haku. Naruto's dark blue chakra was still flaring up the moment he looked into the water and he noticed he'd achieved the final level of the Reaper's eyes, the resurrection eyes, as he would say to himself, don't worry mom and dad, we'll be together again soon real soon he then deactivated his shinigami eye and changed his sight back into his base form and sheathing it said you're going to be the shinigami's next meal if you so much as touch the handle on my sword uchiha and with that everyone went to bed and decided to leave for kanoha the next day with two kirin in, in tow oh it looks like they actually joined anyways chapter nine this one's definitely a good one the revival of naruto's parents a family once again hey y'all i ain't even gonna lie i'm actually kind of getting a lot better at reading these chapters just saying we're on chapter nine and there's a grand total of 19 actually no 20 chapters so we're basically halfway there and that's a good thing considering that this story is a super super long one the movie version of this is probably going to be like three or four hours long but that aside, continuing on with the story, we will continue with uh, chapter 9, right? The revival of Naruto's parents, a family once again. Everyone made it back to Kanoha, and while Sakura followed Sasuke like the weak fangirl she was, and Kakashi and Zabuza and Haku reported to the Hokage, Naruto had other plans in mind. As he walked towards the common Konoha cemetery, and finding his parents' graves activated his resurrection eyes and sitting in a meditating position, clapped his hands together. In the earth seal, he then formed the ram seal and the tiger seal, and said, Kami-sama, I call upon, I call upon thee. Grant me permission to revive the souls of my parents, Minato Namikaze and Kushina Uzumaki. 
by the good graces of Kami and Shinigami-sama, I hereby declare you fully revived as he screams that out to the heavens and the earth around Naruto would shake as up out of the ground rose two coffins, one labeled fourth Hokage and the other Uzumaki. The coffins then opened up and out of them stepped Naruto's parents. As Naruto looked at his parents and said, Um, d dad, w welcome back. I'm so happy to see you and finally meet you. We're, we're together again. We're a family again. Minato just looked confused as he said, Naruto, what's going on here? I thought your mother and I were supposed to be dead and yet here we are, as alive and young as the day we... It then hit Minato over the head that he's right, they did die the night Min Naruto was born 12 years ago. So how were they brought back from the dead? Minato then looked at his son Naruto and asked, Naruto, did you bring me and your mother back to life? We were sealed by the Reaper. And Naruto said, before you assume anything, no, I'm not a lunatic person like Orochimaru. No, I didn't use the Edo Tensei ritual. The night that your Baka, that you, Bakas sealed the nine-tailed fur ball inside me. The Shinigami gave me some of his and Kami-sama's power in the form of a dojutsu. It's called the Reaper's Eyes, and I had just recently unlocked the final form of the Resurrection Eyes, which allowed me to bring you back without the cost of sacrifices. I could revive any number of people who have died, provided that it's only been 30 minutes to as many as 12 or fewer years. Eventually, with some practice, I could revive people who have been dead for as many as 30 to 60 years or even more. I can also see the future of, or even judge a person's soul and heal all injuries that resulted in death, allowing me to bring them back to life just after they died. And so, with Naruto's explanations of how his bloodline given to him by the Shinigami and Kami themselves, Minato and Kushina could only say one thing and that was, Kami and Shinigami did what now? And you can bring the dead back from the life for as many as 60 years? And Naruto said, Yes, mom and dad, I can. Don't act like you think it's such a big deal. I've kept it a secret from Dons of Shimura this long. And even if you found out, old man Hokage would have him executed for going against Tsunade and Jiraiya's wishes to have me put under the Clan Restoration Act. I made it specifically clear to the entire council, myself, that I won't have any of the clan head's daughters forced upon me for my lineage or my bloodline, or my clan name, and all the money I've inherited from you guys. So as long as Grandma Tsunade and Grandpa Jiraiya live and breathe, and now that you have been brought back, I refuse to be forced to take any future wife at this time. Besides, Hinata Hyuga had already chosen me. She thinks I don't know that she's watching us right now, but I can sense her chakra and nervous emotions like all Uzumaki can. You can come out from behind the cemetery entrance, Hinata-chan. I knew you were there the entire time watching me like you always have. You can't hide your feelings from me, Hinata. From here, Hinata would be shocked and couldn't believe that this whole time. All these years she's been watching Naruto, he's actually noticed that he was being watched and never said anything until now. So knowing that her cover was blown, she came from her hiding spot and said, I, I'm sorry, Naruto-kun. I, I never meant to spy on you. I've, I've always admired your determination to become stronger. Please, Lord Forth, Lady Kushina, don't think so poorly of me. My self-esteem and confidence issues are because my father is always thinking of me as a failure. And Kushina said, Hinata, anyone who is willing to stick by her son's side this whole time deserves our respect. And we have a little talk with your father later about family favoritism and the consequences that follow. And Hinata said, Thank you so much, Naruto-kun. Would, would you like to go on a date with me tonight? And Naruto said as he walked up to Hinata and hugged her, Of course I will, Hinata. And for the record, I've always known that you had a crush on me, and that your father is the reason for the low confidence you have. I can fix that for you if you want me to. And Hinata asked, What are you going to do to him, Naruto? P please don't kill him. And Naruto said, I won't kill him, Hinata. I'm just going to demonstrate what happens to parents that don't treat their children with equal respect as they would their youngest. Fear can be a powerful motivator when used properly. And Minato and Kushina said, why don't we, like the way you just said that, Naruto, I'm worried you're going to put the fear of the Shinigami into Hiyashi and his clan council. And Naruto said, because that's exactly what I intend to do. No one talks down to my friend and admirer and gets away with it. 
Naruto then activated his Shinigami's eye and flaring his dark blue chakra around him, ran off to the Hyuga clan compound to motivate Hiyashi Hyuga to treat his daughter Hinata a little more kindly. Naruto had made it to the Hyuga clan compound and walked right up to the guards and without even drawing his sword, killed the guards as he said, Izanami, kill. The guards then dropped dead to the ground and Naruto walked up to the main combat and yelled, Hiyashi Hyuga, get out here. I've got a bone to pick with you. Hiyashi then came out barging out of his office and out the courtyard and said, who dares break into my compound and demand that? Dear Kami-sama, have mercy. And Naruto said, you know who I am, and you know the bloodline I possessed, and you obviously know what I want to talk to you about if you're begging Kami-sama for mercy. Your soul has been judged. The verdict is innocent. A second judgment of your soul has been made. The verdict is guilty. You're guilty of not treating your daughter Hinata with the same treatment you give her sister Hanabi, who just so happens to be behind me right now. Hiyashi then yelled saying, Hanabi, run, get away from him, he's the Grim Reaper of Konoha. But sadly, it was too late, as Naruto drew his spirit blade and said, Spirit Dweller Izanagi. The sword then turned into a whip, which then wrapped around Hanabi and began draining her life force, as Naruto gained all the knowledge she had and said, Well, that's interesting. It seems like you've spoiled Hanabi more than I thought. You're teaching Hanabi all the advanced gentle first style techniques while you leave Hinata-chan with nothing but the basics. Such a disgraceful clan head you are, Hiyashi Hyuga. You will either teach Hinata-chan the same techniques as Hanabi or I will end the Hyuga clan line with only Hinata and Hanabi remaining. Am I clear? Hiyashi Hyuga just nodded his head yes in fear of knowing that if he didn't, he would be meeting his angry wife in the afterlife, a fate far worse than death itself. Hiyashi then said, please spare me and my family, almighty grim reaper of Kanoha. Kill my clan advisors, but please don't hurt me and my family. I'll do whatever you want, just name it. I'll even train Hinata and Hanabi as equals, I, I, I swear. And Naruto said, very good. I rest assured that I will be watching you closely, Hiyashi Yuga. Don't make me return here a second time, or your entire clan will be on a one-way trip to the Shinigami stomach. Naruto then went back home, just as his parents showed up to talk to Hiyashi, and Kushina said, Well, Minato, it looks like Naruto's already said enough to Hiyashi to make him fear the fear of death god incarnate. Hinata, we'll have Naruto pick you up at 6pm tonight for good data, right? And Hinata said, That's fine, it gives me plenty of time to prepare and get ready. Does Naruto couldn't have anything else that he likes aside from ramen noodles and training all the time? And Kushina said, Sadly, Hinata... From what Jiraiya and Tsunade have told us, the villagers used to destroy anything nice that Naruto ever had, and even though most of the village accepts him as a hero for containing the QB, others, such as your father, don't approve of their children being around him. But I think after tonight, that will all change. And Hinata said, I hope so. Minato-sama, Lady Kushina, I love him more than you know. He makes me happy, but he's never been happy. At least, not until Lord Jirai and Tsunade came back to take care of her, that is. Since then, he's never showed any form of emotion in public at all. I think once the village was told about you being his parents, the constant attention began annoying him. At first, he was okay with it, but even then, he found it annoying. He even found the civilian council siding with him, but that all changed when people started offering him things that he felt like he was not worthy of having, because he hadn't worked hard for it. In a way, I guess he doesn't think that anyone else except his own family is worth his time now, and I don't know what to do about changing the way he's growing more distant from others. Even Sasuke Uchiha has tried to challenge him and convince him otherwise, but Naruto just says that if they fought each other and held nothing back, Sasuke Uchiha would be dead within seconds. It's getting late and I have to start getting ready for our date tonight, but thank you for bringing me home. And Kushina said, no problem Hinata, and don't worry about Naruto, he's just being stubborn. It runs in the Uzumaki clan family after all, we can be quite prideful to say the least. The last, the least, uh, the least, a at times. So it's more a sense of pride that he's not accepting things because he's not worth of having them. It's a matter of if he's accepting something without earning it through hard work that makes him feel bad, because it's a heavy blow to his pride as an honest person. 
Now that Hinata understood a little bit more about what Naruto was thinking, she could hopefully try cracking open that shell full of emotions that Naruto has been keeping locked up from others, except his own family. As she knew that the only thing that she couldn't do was, uh oh, as she knew that only one thing that could do it was a kiss on her lips and to start a new relationship between them. Chapter 10, Donzo's Judgment Where True Loyalties Lie. After Naruto had revived his parents and they went to the Hokage to explain everything well, um, let's just say that Hiruzen just barely avoided meeting the Shinigami, and had Naruto not stopped his parents from killing the old man Hiruzen, the old, oh wait, from killing the old man, Hiruzen would be visiting his angry and very dissatisfied sensei Tobirama Senju in the afterlife. Naruto then said, Mom and Dad, please, I know that you're very angry with the way the village didn't uphold your last dying wishes to me, seen by them as a hero for containing the oversized furball, but did you honestly expect them to forget about something like that? The lives that were lost, the family and friends that died in the middle of the attack? I still haven't forgiven the Ninetales for killing you, not fully anyway. We get along sometimes, but he's too arrogant to let go of the past. Paka Kitsune. Just then, Donzo Kuharu and Homura walked into the office, and when they saw Minato and Kushina and realized who was with them, Donzo knew he was dead. Oh, he knew the rumors, heard the stories, and even shivered at the thought of being judged by those eyes of Naruto's. It's for that very reason he hasn't been trying to organize angry mobs against the boy. The three village elders then out of nowhere said with fear in their voices, L Lord Forth, L L Lady Kushina. What are you doing here? You, you're supposed to be dead. From here, Naruto would say, What's the matter, you old goats? You're not worrying that my parents would find out that you're taking my inheritance money that they left to keep me for the Root and Anbu organization running, are you? Danzo, Kuharu, and Homura said nothing, as they knew they were screwed if Minato and Kushina found out that the, count, that the civilian council had been stealing from their son. Kami, have mercy on them. Naruto then said, Now then, we're all going to play a game I like to call the 20 questions of life or death. We will ask each of you questions, and if you answer honestly, and don't try lying, and if and you will answer honestly. Oh, and don't try lying to me because my Reaper's eyes see through all and any deception. All of it in your soul. If you tell the truth, I don't kill you, and your soul through though corrupted and greedy as it is, will be spared. Tell nothing but lies, and I'll be forced to take alternative measures. My spirit dweller sword is a sensitive weapon known as Zanpakuto. Unlike most, mine inhabits the spirits of the first of the first gods of Japan, Izanagi and Izanami. One drains the life out of your body, while the other simply takes it. Sounds fun, right? Okay, well, let's get started. Hokage Gigi, Mom, Dad, begin the questions. Naruto then activated his reaper eyes and Hiruzen asked, Tell me, Donzo, is the Root Anbu organization that I ordered you to have disbanded years ago after you tried to get Itachi Uchiha to kill his entire clan failed, still active and being run behind my back? Well, are they? And Donzo said, I'm not sure what you mean by that, Hiruzen, my old friend. I had the organization disbanded just as you said. The Root Anbu organization no longer exists. And Naruto said, He's lying, Gigi. His voice may not show it, but his soul is as dark and as greedy as Madara Uchiha was. Should I take his soul, or would you like to see what else he's hiding? Hiruzen then said, No, I'd like to find out what else the three of them are hiding. Naruto, your memory projected jutsu, if you please. Now, Koharu and Hamura could start pissing themselves like the elderly people they would, because they have heard from Haruzen what that jutsu does, and every dirty secret they had was about to be revealed. But before they could beg Haruzen to reconsider his decision, Naruto had already stabbed his sword in the floor in front of them, chains then erupted from underneath them, and bound their souls and minds to the sword with Naruto performing the proper hand seals and said, Kami art, memory projects in jutsu. Huh, well would you look at that, Okage Gigi. It seems your advisors have been traitors this whole time. After all, 
Donzel's still running his root on, Boo, I see. Kohara and Hamaru have been the ones behind the organized angry mobs from the day. I was kicked out of the orphanage at A4 and had made numerous attempts at trying to break into my parents' house and steal the secrets to your flying thunder god and Rasengan techniques, dad. And the Uzumaki clan sealing jutsu as well, apparently. This doesn't make your case towards Kami any better. If anything, Yami will have all three of you in the underworld. <laughs> tisk tisk. Now I can take their now can I take their souls, GG? After seeing everything that his teammates were hiding clear as day in front of him, Hiruzen was left with a hard choice. Eliminate his traitorous advisors and prevent any fear further internal conflict or spare at least Koharu and Hamura by letting them rot in prison after a few days of torture with Ibiki and Anko. But as far as Donzo's mind was, his was made up. Hiruzen then said, I am the Hokage. I make laws, and I, the Shinobi Council, run the village, not you, Donzo Shimura. As Hokage, I, Hiruzen Sarutobi, do hereby sentence you to death, which shall be carried out by the Grim Reaper of Kanoha. Naruto, proceed with taking Donzo's soul. And as for you, Koharu and Hamura, you are going to be spending a lot of time with Anko and Ibiki. Then, you're going to be sitting in a prison cell until either I die, Minato retakes the or until I die, Minato retakes the Hokage position, or Tsunade becomes the fifth Hokage, without the possibility of parole or bail being posted. May Kami show you no mercy. Naruto then picked up his spirit dweller sword and said, Spirit Dweller, Izanami. Naruto's sword then turned into a reaper scythe, and with a single swing of the blade, Donzo's head was cut off, and his spirit consumed the entire. Uh, and, and the spirit consumed the, uh, the and his spirit was consumed by the spirit of the scythe Izanami herself, making the weapon all the more powerful with each soul it absorbed, giving Naruto more knowledge and skills to use at any time he wants. Minato and Kushina were horrified at the sight of seeing Naruto kill a person without so much as a single shed of emotion, or even remorse. It actually made them wonder if their own son was even human anymore, since only a god could kill so casually, as though it was just another day at the office. The Anbu then escorted Koharu and Hamura to the torture and interrogation department, where Ibiki and Anko would be having all of the fun in the world with him. Suddenly, Minato then looked at Naruto and said, Looks like that's over with. And Naruto said, and we have a lot more to do. Now, I simply have to judge the souls of the rest of the world. It seems to me that I have a big job cut out for me. Chapter 11, The Chunin Exams, Stage 1. Now, just to preface this, this chapter is going to be very similar to the one in the anime, but with a twist to it. So now, let's begin this story. After being revived by their son, Naruto, Minato, and Kushina decided to return to active shinobi duty, and so, as to keep a close eye on their son, they decided that Kakashi would be placed back into the Anbu, which Haruzen thought was a little bit of an overkill, but then Naruto made a suggestion and said, I have a better idea for what you can do to Kakashi Hokage Gigi. Why not make him a protector for the Chunin exam coming up? Think about it. If Kakashi Bakik screws this up, you could always put him under the Clan Restoration Act, since he is the last one of the Hatsukes, right? By the way, guys, my bad. I'm scratching my eyes. Anyways, though, um, suddenly, we would end up having um, Kakashi be completely shocked as hearing this. Kakashi knew that if he screwed this up, he's going to be the one getting screwed by the council. And Haruzen then said, Very well, Naruto. I shall take your proposal into consideration. Kakashi, you will be the proctor for the finals of the tuning exams. Non-negotiable, I'm afraid. You do this, or go under the Clan Restoration Act, with any five Kunoichi of the Council's choice. If you have not chosen within a two weeks' time, Minato, Kushina, you're going to be Team 7, Kakashi Hatake's replacements, Sensei, and co-captain. Dismissed. And Minato and Kushina said, Thank you, Lord Third. We shall not fail you. And rest assured, Sasuke Uchiha will, will knock that superiority complex out of you. One way or another, you will learn how to work as a team properly. And before you say anything, remember who you're talking to. I was the person who trained your brother Itachi Uchiha. I was his Anbu captain, Minato, and I was his Anbu captain. Minato here 
was the former fourth Hokage, known on the battlefield as the Yellow Flash. Things are going to change, and it starts with the basics. Report to the Namikaze Clown Compound training ground for team training. Effective immediately, Naruto said. Follow me guys, we're going to my house and if you haven't figured it out already, Sasuke, they're my parents. So do be a good Uchiha and speak when spoke to. If not for me and my future side abilities, your entire clan would be dead. Instead of just your clan council, keep that in mind. You owe me the lives of your clansmen and women, remember that. Naruto then led the way to his family's house, and when they got there, they were surprised at how large the house really was. It had to be two stories tall at least. They then went around to the back of the house and found the training grounds and to Sasuke and Sakura's surprise, they were massive. At least three full acres of land. Sakura was seriously beginning to reconsider her past actions towards Naruto. Kushina would then say, Alright runts, welcome to your training from hell. Sakura Haruno, you're training with me. I'm gonna beat that fangirl mentality out of you, and you will not disobey anything I say. Got that? Minato then said, Naruto and Sasuke, your training's gonna be with me. Be prepared because I'm not gonna be taking it easy on you. Kakashi may have treated you with kid gloves, but here's where the gloves come off. Like Naruto's mother said, welcome to your training from hell. He would say it in a little bit of a nicer and calmer way, and Naruto then said, I've already trained with the Shinigami and Kyuubi in Kenjutsu, but my ninjutsu and chakra skills need, still need some work. Grandma Tsunade and Grandpa Jirai have helped me out a lot, but I could still use more ninjutsu training. I know only the Shadow Clone Jutsu and the Academy Style Taijutsu, and some medical ninjutsu, but no elemental ninjutsu yet. You could blame Kakashi for that as well. Now, Minato was furious. Why wouldn't Kakashi help Naruto with him learning his chakra nature, or at the very minimum, find someone else who can? He would have little to talk with his last remaining student about that, but only two things came to mind, and that was the council and favoritism. A full week passed while training and Team 7 couldn't have been more prepared. Sakura had realized that being a fangirl will get you killed, so she gave up on this. Her mother, M Mebuki Haruno, wasn't too pleased when she found out from the Hokage that her daughter was reassigned to Kushina and Minato as their sensei and was giving up on Sasuke Uchiha. Needless to say, Hiruzen put his foot down and said that it is what it is and she needed to be a proper shinobi and the academy curriculum was being reformed and that the council didn't inform her of this because it's a shinobi matter, not a civilian one. Hiruzen Sarutobi had been pushed around by his advisors far too long, and with Donzo's manipulative ways out of the picture, he had finally had full control over the council again. Meanwhile, with Team 7 at the academy entrance, Sasuke, Sakura, and Naruto had just entered the testing room where the first exam was to take place. And at the moment Team 7 stepped in, the room went dead silent. Dead silent as though the Shinigami himself had made an appearance, and they weren't wrong about that either since Naruto was, as it stood, the Grim Reaper incarnate. Nobody approached them, not even Ino who wanted to jump Sasuke but decided not to. Oh, they all knew and heard the rumors that Naruto was related to the fourth Hokage and his wife Kushina Uzumaki, but when they heard that they were came back from the dead, they all knew only one person was capable of doing that, and that was Naruto himself. Ibiki Morino then showed up to start the exams, but before he said anything, he took notice of Naruto with his reaper eyes activated and he even flinched a little at the cold glare that was boring its way into his very soul. He would think to himself, damn it, out of all of the Genin to participate this year, why did he have to be one of them? Anyone who crossed his paths with you knows you play fair or you lose your soul. So much for mind games here. Looks like I have to be fair to all of them. This goes against everything I believe in as a sadist. Naruto then deactivated his reaper eyes and said, Ibiki Morimo, head of Kanoha's torture and interrogation department, also known as a sadistic mind specialist. Your mind games won't be able to work on me nor my team. Others, maybe, but that's because they're too weak-minded. You know who I am. 
You're aware of my reputation and moniker as the Grim Reaper of Kona, huh? And I expect this to be a fair test. Your soul isn't the most pure of heart in this room right now, and that title goes to Hinata Hyuga. Everyone else in the room looks at Hinata in shock and awe to think that of everyone here, she's the most kind and pure of heart. Naruto then said, My abilities don't work on her for this very reason. Neji Hyuga, a fair warning? Harm Hinata-chan in any way, break her confidence in any shape or form, and I will kill you, your entire Branch House family, and Lord Hiyashi Hyuga. Do you see where I'm going with this? I've already judged the soul of every person in this room, including you Subaku Gara, Tamari, Kankuro. Your tailed beast chakra is what gave you away. Your seal containing the Shukaku is unstable, most likely the end result of an inexperienced seals expert and I look forward to meeting you in a battle. And so, with all the intimidating threats over, the test would begin, as Naruto started leaking his dark blue chakra, making everyone else except his teammates nervous. Except his teammates nervous, right, yeah. More than 10 teams gave up before the final question, or were caught cheating. However, Neji Hyuga was beginning to think Naruto was bluffing. There's no way he could kill an entire clan like Itachi Uchiha would have, but then again, was he really that serious about Hinata being pure of heart? He had a talk with his uncle Hiyashi Hyuga about all this, and Ibiki then gulped and said, Alright, time, time's up. The next and final question is one of choice. Remember, we have death itself looking over our shoulder. The question is, if you take this question, you pass. But don't think it's that easy. Don't take it, and you fail. Everyone in the room was now wondering why Ibiki was so nervous, and then they had remembered what Naruto said about being the Grim Reaper incarnate. Anyone in that room that values their life would be afraid of him, except for Hinata, for some strange reason who would be extremely calm about the whole situation. Perhaps she was the most pure soul in the entire village. Ibiki then said, For those of you who have stayed, you all pass. Ibiki then breathed a sigh of relief as he felt Naruto cancel his killing intent throughout the room. Anko came crashing through the window, but just before the glass hit the floor, Naruto snapped his fingers and snapped his fingers, and time immediately stopped. He then looked at Anko and said, "Please be more civilized and use the door. Let's try this again, should we?" Anko nodded her head as Naruto snapped his fingers, and the glass windows repair itself as time was turned back. And instead of the window, Ibiki was surprised to see that Anko actually used the door for once. What happened? Ibiki then asked and said, Hey kid, did you somehow stop time and convince Anko to use the door? And Naruto said, That's exactly what I did, Ibiki. I can do more than just stop time. I can also reverse it and fast forward it, but only by at least 10 minutes. How do you think I finished so quickly? A bright light appears before Naruto, and who should it be but the spirits of Izanpakuto, Izanagi, and Izanami? Izanagi then said, you must be very careful with your time-altering abilities, Naruto-sama. Overuse could result in universal consequences. However, that is not the reason we're here. We've come to grant you the opportunity to work with us. And Izanami said, We want you to know that Kami and Shinigami have seen your abilities and wish to make you a god, the god of fate and destiny. You will literally be able to predict the person's fate or destiny depending on their actions in life. Do you accept? Naruto gave it some thought as he thought about it and he realized that he's sure that sure he has the powers and abilities of a god, but to actually become one? He needed time to think about it. Naruto then asked, would I be able to stay here or do I have to stay among the heavens with Kami and Shinigami-sama? Izanagi and Izanami just looked at each other and nodding their heads said, we shall let you decide where you would like to set up your domain, earths or heavens. Naruto said, I choose Earth, so what now? Izanagi then said, Now, you must choose where to set up a shrine for you to be worshipped at, and then the inhabitants of that religion shall pray their respects to you, so where will we be placing your shrine? And Naruto only said two words, Wave Country. And with that, a shrine of Naruto appeared in the center of the town in Wave Country, as Izanami and Izanagi said, It is done. You now protect all of Wave Country with your shrine and expect to be hearing prayers to you for guidance as a whisper in your head. They then banished back into the Spirit Dweller Sword and Naruto said, huh, that was unexpected. Where's the next challenge? And Anko said, the Forest of Death. Follow me, please. 
And Naruto said, Sounds like fun. Lead the way, Snake Mistress. Anko cringed at being called by her nickname. It's the one thing that she's had a very hard time dealing with, ever since she's been betrayed by Orochimaru. She then unknowingly reached for her shoulder and rubbed where the curse mark was, and Naruto said, Is something wrong, Anko Mitarashi? A painful curse seal, perhaps? I'll remove that for you. But in return, you must become Kakashi Hatake's bride. Deal? Anko knew she was making a deal with the devil, but what other option does she have? The kid's just been made a god. She didn't want to get her hopes up too high, but who else could get rid of the curse mark and kill Orochimaru? As much as she hated making deals with the devil, she hated Orochimaru even more. So taking a leap of faith, she asked, After I married him, do I get to have sex with him and bear his children? And Naruto said, the deal I have with the Hokage is that if he is to screw up as a proctor for the final exams, he is to put under the Clan Restoration Act. Since he's the last of the Hatake clan after all, then yes, you could, and you will share with him and you will share him with four other women that you trust. And Anko said, You have a deal, kid. Now everyone else gets a training grounds 44. You have 10 minutes or you're disqualified. Everyone else left and ran as fast as possible to get to the grounds where Ibiki Morino left, as well as Naruto as well, and Naruto performed the summoning jutsu and said, Summoning jutsu! Shinigami! The Shinigami then appeared and said, Greetings, young champion. What is it you desire? Naruto then sang, Anko, please remove your short and bra and taking off your jacket so Shinigami can see the curse mark you have. And Shinigami said, Ah, yeah. I am familiar with curse marks, and Orochimaru is no exception. I shall remove the curse mark, as he would do so, and Anko then did as Naruto asked, Shinigami placing his hand on the back of her shoulder, as he then channeled his god chakra into the seal, overloading it, as he would destroy any trace of the nature chakra that powered it. Shinigami then removed his hand from Anko, and said, It is done. The curse mark has been removed. You're free from Orochimaru. Anko Mitarashi. Until next time we meet, young champion of life and death, congratulations on your promotion to godhood. Shinigami then banished and decided to report this to Kami, immediately knowing how displeased she would be at Orochimaru claiming to be immortal. Anko then put her clothes back on and said, Thanks for that. I'm forever in your debt. Anything you need, just ask me and I can get it done. And Naruto said, Just remember our deal. The Hokage is watching all of this with his crystal ball. Pick four other women you trust. Our business here is done. Good day. Now, some may say that Anko did that what Anko did was reckless and foolish even, but to her, Naruto was a Naruto Naruto. Naruto was a miracle sent straight to her. And now she just needed to find four other women to join her with bearing Kakashi's children. Who will these four other lucky ladies be? And what will happen when Kakashi finds out? Find out in the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. Just kidding, next chapter. Anyways, uh, chapter 12. Team 7 versus Orochimaru, the god of fate's true form. When Shinigami reports about Orochimaru claiming to be immortal throughout the years, reach the desk full of Kami, the also oh cumble hottest of life and creation was now a very vengeful woman. If there's one thing Kami couldn't stand, it's people claiming to be immortal and acting like gods. Well, let's just say that it takes an immortal to kill an immortal. So knowing that Naruto would accept the position she and Shinigami decided to make Naruto a full god, Team 7 was currently facing Orochimaru as Sasuke Uchiha was crippled by fear, and Sakura was helpless to do anything. Suddenly, a bright white aura of power appeared around Naruto, and what happened next, not even Orochimaru could prevent, as a white aura would latch onto Naruto like an armor, as he would then grow a pair of horns, and his Anpakuto became a giant saber, with Naruto approaching Orochimaru, and with this, his reaper eyes activated. Orochimaru of the Sanin, your soul has been judged. The verdict is guilty. Your punishment for being a false god is death. Shinigami art, soul binding chains of fate. Orochimaru was then held down by us white spectral trains and to even Sasuke and Sakura's surprise, the way Naruto looked could only be described as godlike. Orochimaru then said, no, no, this cannot be how it ends. I'm immortal. I'm, I'm the snake Sanin Orochimaru. I can't be killed. 
Orochimaru was struggling to break free from the chains that bound him to Naruto's sword. As Naruto then said, The more you struggle, Orochimaru, the tighter those chains are going to become. Izanami, Reaper Scythe. Naruto then said as he lifted his scythe over his shoulder and would say, Any last words? Before she who invites takes your eternal soul to the underworld? Orochimaru said nothing. Instead, he just spat in the god of fate's face and, Orochi and Naruto said, I'm seriously going to enjoy taking your head and repossessing your Kusanagi sword. Oh, that's right. I forgot to mention that Kamisama wanted your sword as proof of your death. Goodbye, Orochimaru. I hope you enjoy eternal damnation. Swing. Suddenly, Naruto would have cut off his head and his head would thump on the ground. As his scythe would absorb his soul, and Naruto would turn back into his human form, saying, Well, now that we have both scrolls needed to enter the tower, I suggest we get moving. And remove the curse mark on Sasuke's neck. Let's go. Meanwhile, watching from the heavens, Kami and Shinigami were watching how Naruto would handle his new position of God of Fate, and to their expectations, he would have taken out a thorn in Shinigami's side for a long time now. Orochimaru was dead and Kami couldn't resist easily, knowing that the Kuzunagi sword would be handled by Naruto until he was alone to summon her, and Shinigami to hand deliver it to them personally. Shinigami then said, I must admit, Mintress Kami, I didn't expect him to be able to handle his new power as a god so easily. We can certainly expect great things from him in the future, that is certain. And Kami said, You're right, Shinigami. When I made Naruto the offer to become a god, I didn't think he'd be able to handle it. But apparently he's exceeded even my own expectations. Those Hugas are in for a rude awakening when they start praying for fate to spare them and see who shows up. In fact, I've never seen the Nine Tails getting along with any of his last two hosts until Naruto came along. It's only a matter of time until the Battle of the Beast takes place. What do you say? We watch the finals of the exam, and I mean in person. In disguise as a married person, a couple. And Shinigami said, That sounds like a, a magnificent idea, milady. We must also invite the others, Susano and Amaterasu as well. Surely, they would like to meet their newest addition to the Pantheon. Kami nodded her head in agreement with Shinigami and they would continue to watch as the events leading up to the Battle of the Beast would take place in the finals. Orochimaru may have orchestrated the invasion plans, but Kabuto Yukush Yuku Yakushi would be the one to carry out the order. Next time, Chunin Exam Final Round Preliminary, Battle of the Beasts. Next chapter, chapter 13, third round, wait, wait, wait. third round. The God of Fate's Intervention Alright, let's get this one out of the way. The time had finally arrived. All the teams were gathered in the tower, and it was for the final match, with Hinata against Neji, and Naruto who would be watching with his Reaper's eyes, activating, seeing every future outcome of the battle. And he was getting angrier and angrier with everything he'd predict was soon or will be happening as his white aura was flaring out of control. Mika Shinamati and Sosan or Shinigami Susano Kami and Amaterasu saw this and knew what would happen next. As Naruto had predicted the end result, his white aura still flaring said to the Hokage, Stop this match right now or so help me I will. And before you decide to disqualify me from the exams, you should know that there is an attack being prepared by sand and sound shinobi i i have killed orochimaru but a subordinate kabuto yakushi still has his order to begin the invasion stop this match before neji kills hinata and i am forced to kill him as the god of fate i outrank everyone here now stop this match right now before the angel of destiny is killed or i kill you hiruzen then said i'm sorry naruto but once the matchups are chosen they cannot be altered for the sake of one person, who was an angel or a god. The match with Neji Hyuga versus Hinata Hyuga shall. Hiruzen said nothing as Naruto was about to transform into the god of fate mode, and Kami of Shinigami then appeared in front of Hiruzen and practically demanding him said, You would do well to do as fate sama demands of you. Hiruzen Sadutobi, you were about to die by Orochimaru's hands had he not been killed and his soul forever vanished to the underworld, but I sense a growing disease within your body. Cancer, I'm afraid. Based on the stage at sad and your old age, you may have another two, if not three months left to live. 
Hiruzen knew that this was Kami and Shinigami he was talking to, the god of death and the goddess of life and creation, and he was about to cancel the match when suddenly, Naruto in his god form appeared and said, I won't let you put Hinata's life in danger, Proctor. Is there any way to substitute one challenger for another? And Kakashi said, Yes, there is, Naruto. According to the rules of the Chunin exam, by the second Okage, if one of the challengers has reached the point where they cannot continue the match, or is either ended or a substitution may be made, do you wish to take Hinata's place in this match? And Naruto said, Yes, I shall. I warn you about trying to kill Hinata, Sean Neji. I've seen every outcome of the match and I know what your game plan is. Rest assured, you will die by my hand, the hand of fate. I am your clan's god, and you have just invoked my wrath upon your entire branch's house family. Once I've killed you, of course, Hinata then stumbled over to Naruto and said, Please, Naruto-kun, spare, <coughs> spare Neji if you want to, if you want to, spare Neji, if you want to kill someone, kill the <coughs> elders, save him from his hatred. And Naruto said, As you wish, my angel. Time to begin. Naruto then said as he stabbed the sword into the stone floor, Fate art, chains, light and darkness, judgment circle jutsu. Kami and Shinigami then said, well, that's a new one. I wonder what it does. A pair of black and white chains form the yin and yang symbol beneath Neji. After which, another set of the same chains wrapped around Neji's arms and legs and necks. As Naruto said, this is a special jutsu of my own design. Would you like to know what it does? Well, to put it simply, those chains wrapped around you are judging every fiber of what makes you human. Those chains are searching for your soul, for any shape or form of guilty or murderous intent. Matter how It doesn't matter how small it may be. The yin and yang symbol beneath you then lights up, yin if you're innocent and yang if you're guilty. If you're found innocent, Yin will purify your soul, but if you're guilty, your soul is extracted from your body by the very same darkness that you hold within your heart. And Neji said, There's no way you're a god, especially the god of fate, and even if you were, I'd never worship you. And Naruto said, That was a very poor choice of words, Neji. It's time for me to cast your judgment upon your soul. Circle of fate and destiny, what have you decided? Guilty or innocent? The circle then lit up with the yin symbol, and Naruto said, Count your blessing this day, Neji Hyuga. The universe has found your soul innocent and misguided. Art of fate, soul purification jutsu. Neji then glowed with a bright white light, and when it faded, the chains vanished, and Neji fell to his knees and said, I, I understand my truth now. My father gave his life for the good of the clan. I've been lied to by my own family all these years, by by my own uncle and the clan elders. He truly is the, the god of fate. I could have just been killed right now. Kakashi then said, winner of the final round of the preliminaries by substitution, Naruto Uzumaki, Namakaze, which by default, Hinata Hyuga also moves on to the final round matches in one month. This concludes the preliminary round of the third stage of the Chunin exams. Naruto then walked over to Hinata and Kurenai and said, Move aside, Kurenai Yuhi. This is a matter of the gods and angels, not mortals. Kurenai then backed away and said, As you wish, Fate-sama. Please save her. And Naruto said, I would never let my own girlfriend die. So long as live, so long as I live and breathe as a god, sh and she my angel, I'll protect her from anyone and anything, even her own family if necessary. Kami art. Healing flames of the sun goddess. Hinata's body was then engulfed in white flames, and all of her internal and external gingeries were completely healed. Naruto then picked up Hinata bridal style and carried her to the infirmary so that she could sleep and get some rest. Naruto would have his revenge, one way or another. He would rid the world of its corrupted ways and achieve everlasting peace, by force if necessary. Chapter 14 the Invasion, A Battle of the Beasts, the Leg and the Legendary Three. It was the third match of the Chunin Exams Finals, and an all-out and an all went smoothly 
until Kabuto decided to make his move and disguised as the Kaze Kage got close to the third Hokage to assassinate him and almost succeeded had Minato and Kushina not been there to save Haruzen in time. Kabuto would most likely have finished what Orochimaru started, but Minato had thought fast and used his Harai Shinjutsu to get inside the Four Corners barrier while Kushina disabled it from the out outside by defeating the Sound Four. Sadly, by the time they made it outside, the village the Shukaku had the uh, outside the village, the Shukaku had already freed itself from Gara. And when Haruzen and all the Shinobi, and when Haruzen and all the Shinobi saw Naruto facing off against the One Tails, well, let's just say that Minato was having a flashback to 12 years ago when he and Kushina had sealed Kurama inside of Naruto. But what they saw and heard Naruto do next surprised even them with Shukaku slash Gaara and Naruto. Naruto was currently staring down the fact of Shukaku, and he then looked at Gaara and said, you're not the one I want to be fighting, Gaara. Release Shukaku so I can see who's more powerful. And Gaara said, you're the one who's asking for this Naruto Uzumaki play possum jutsu. Shukaku then screamed out and said, oh yeah, I'm back, ba Time to have some fun. Wind style, air bullet. Naruto then bit his thumb and drawing blood said, multi shamaning jutsu, nine tails. Everyone watching couldn't believe it. Naruto not only summoned Thief Chode, Gamabunta, but Katsuyu and Manda, plus the nine tails as well. Everyone watching Naruto standing on the Chief Toad's head had brought back memories of the QB attack, and Haruzen then said, He is truly just like you, Minato, Kushina. However, when did he sign the Snake Contract and the Fox Contract? This won't sit well with the Council. And Minato said, You let us worry about the Council, and Naruto being promoted, Sarutobi. If he can beat a tailed beast on his own, then he's more than deserved it. We better get away from here. Kurama grinned like mad and said, Hello little brother Shukaku, still depriving your host of his sleep as usual? I see, how many times was it I've beaten you now? 9.999 to 0, if I recall? And Shukaku said, Only because you always cheated, Kurama. But I guess I could say the same thing about you. Still getting stuck with a new Zumaki clan member as your host? I'm beginning to think that they're the only ones who are able to contain you. Now, if there's one thing Kurama always hated, it's being called a cheater. He's a fox, and foxes are crafty creatures by nature. Plus, the fact that Shukaku was always so predictable, well, you can only imagine how that would make Shukaku feel after 9,999 losses to Kurama. One for every century they fought. Naruto then said, Enough talking, Shukaku. Time to fight. Manda, hold him down. Chief Toad, cut off his arms and tail cuts. And Katsuya, spread out and restore anyone who is injured during this battle. Kurama, why don't we make this an even 1,000 wins? How about a game of tailed beast tag? And Kurama said, do I get to cut loose and go wild? I'm just itching to destroy something right now. And I'm considering having roasted raccoon tail for lunch. And Naruto said, keep your cool Kurama. We saw what they did to Rock Lee. Let's not forget this sand, his sand wall defense and sand shuriken jutsu as well. Watch your back and don't get cocky, understand? And Kurama said, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Kami, you're so tied up, some, you're so uptight sometimes. Perhaps you should consider getting. And Naruto said, Kurama, unless you want to see Shinigami again, I suggest you need not finish that sentence. Otherwise, I'll chain you down, remember that. And Kurama would just flinch at the thought of what happened 12 years ago. And now, just last year, was chained down by Naruto like a dog. Naruto then said, let's do this guys. Manda rushed in and held down Shukaku by restraining and constricting him. And Gamabunta then rushed in with Naruto in his head. As Naruto went through a series of hand seals after lodging his Zanpakuto into Shukaku. And said, Jinchuriki ceiling art, chakra suppression chains jutsu.
A set of chains similar to Kushina's erupted from Naruto's sword and binded its chakra to Naruto. Naruto then snapped his fingers and Shukaku was completely immobilized. Kurama then fired a tailed beast bomb and Minato said, Everyone get clear! We have to leave the area now! They didn't need to be told twice. Everyone got a safe distance and Kurama said, As usual, you're so predictable with that sand burial of your Shukaku. Why not try something new for once? What the? A sand substitution? And Shukaku said, I'm right behind you, big bro. Sand coffin. <laughs> I finally got you for once. And Kurama said as a huge toothy grin came upon his face. You think so, Shukaku? Naruto, do it. And Naruto said, Right, Jinjuriki, ceiling art, chakra tench furnish jutsu. All of a sudden, chakra was drained from him as Kurama then punched his clawed fist through Shukaku, who then turned back into sand afterwards and went back into the seal. As Naruto then said, Thanks, guys, for the help. Kurama, go take a long nap and restore your energy. Naruto then jumped off of Gamabunta, and the four mighty summons then disappeared as Naruto said, Uh. That was boring. I expected more of a fight from a tailed beast like Shukaku, but I guess in the end, the more powerful tailed beast won. Good old Kurama knows sure how to put a better fight. And now, to fix that seal on Gaara. A Jinchuriki art. Memory Link Jutsu. Inside of Gaara's mind. I can't believe it. I, I can't believe it. I, I lost for the thousandth time. Uh, against Kurama and his host. Naruto then appeared in Gara's mind and said, Oh, quit your complaining, Shikaku. Get over it. You lost because you were arrogant and overconfident in your abilities. Fight smarter, not harder, Shikaku. Now go back to sleep while I extract the angry priest from you. Shinigami art. Soul extraction jutsu. Shikaku then screamed out in pain as the soul of the priest was taken and sent to Shinigami, Shikaku, and would then fall asleep as Naruto excited in Gara's mind and said, it's done, Shinigami Samara. The priest is all yours. Naruto then walked over to the Hokage and his parents, and all the Sinobi said, So, am I getting that promotion at Chunin, or what I have just done in saving your asses and our village warrant cause for double promotion at Jonin? Rest assured, I'll accept the, the position of Sensei unless it's Kanahamaru Corpse. That closet pervert Ebisu isn't teaching them anything useful at all. And Haruzen said, With all due respect, Naruto, based on the battle we've all just witnessed, you are more than likely going to be requested by the Anbu Black Ops after today, and every clan is going to be begging me to make you their children's sensei. Are you certain you want my grandson and his friends as your Genin team? It is a very big responsibility, you know. And Naruto said, Those are my terms and conditions, old man. Otherwise, I'll just take the promotion to Chunin. Aruzen then looked at Naruto's parents and said, Minato, Kushina, do you think Naruto is ready and responsible enough to train his own team? I'm not sure he's had enough battlefield experience yet, do you? His reputation for being very lucky without even trying exceeds him, but that's not the only skill required needed, as you are all aware. And Minato said, Sarutobi, I can say without a doubt that Naruto certainly is ready for a Genin team, but he still has a lot more to learn when it comes to strategy and battle. As you said, he got lucky, and luck only gets you so far in life. And Haruzen said, Very well then, I shall put it up to a vote for the next council meeting. However, I'm half tempted to make him the fifth Hokage right here and now, if that is still your dream, Naruto. And Naruto said, I'll accept the Hokage's hat when I've rightfully earned it through hard work and dedication. I'm not going to accept handouts like the Uchiha do. The fourth Hokage son or not, I'm not go I'm going to become Hokage in my own way and follow my own path to become stronger. For now, I'll accept the position of Chunin, and Haruzen said, very well, Naruto. Meet me in my office and I will hand you your vest and sign the paperwork. I truly hate that crap. Minato, I've gotta know, how did you get your paperwork done so quickly? I'll do anything, just please tell me your secret. And Naruto and his parents just said, We use shadow clones, you idiot, and you called yourself the professor and god of shinobi? Haruzen then said, Of course. Why didn't I think of that? Dumb, dumb, dumb old age. Minato, please take the hat after Naruto's promotion, please. I'm begging you. And Minato said, Well, okay, if you insist, but only if Kushina gets to stay as Naruto sensei. And Haruzen said, Yeah, yeah, fine. Now please take back this accursed hat. 
Minato then took the hat and put on his Okage's jacket and said, People in Shinobi of Kanoha, I, Minato Namikaze, reinstated 4th Hokage, grant you, Naruto Uzumaki, and Namikaze, the rank of Tokubajetsu, Jonin, as a double promotion, and your teammates the rank of Chunin. Congratulations. Naruto just bowed in respect to his father and said thank you. But it's just a rank and Grim Reaper of Konoha is just a title that makes other fear, like you once did. Yellow Flash of Konoha names and ranks and titles only get you so much respect before it drives a person mad with power and abuse. Making other feels feel bad to make themselves feel good. I'll be at home if you need me. Naruto then vanished in a veil of white light and went back to his house to meditate. After such a long day and a hard fought battle, Kami knows he's needed a break. For a while now, and so, with the tuning exams coming to a close, Naruto looks forward to seeing his new Genin team, the Kanahamaru Corps, when they graduate the academy next semester. <laughs> the fun they're going to be having together, or so Kanahamaru thinks. <laughs> Chapter 15 An Unexpected Visit from Fate and Destiny to the Hyuga Clan Elders. Alright, so let's see how this chapter starts off. After the invasion, Naruto went home to gather his thoughts. It had then occurred to him that he hadn't visited Hinata yet in the hospital. Though her injuries were healed, she still needed medical attention to be certain. Not like any other medical ninja could do a better job than his grandmother Tsunade. So we now find Naruto sitting next to Hinata, fast asleep, never once leaving her side. The Angel of Destiny, and him, the God of Fate, he was beginning to think that Kami and Shinigami were planning on this to happen from the start, but either way, he didn't care. As long as Hinata's with him, he would face all the gods and clans of Kanoha, plus an entire army of cloud mist, sand and stone shinobi, and their five kage for Hinata's safety, and he would win by killing them all to prove his love for her. But soon, very soon, the Hyuga clan elders would pay for their arrogant ways. To rig the exams just to prove that Neji was a prodigy? What on earth were they thinking? More publicity for them and less reputation towards the Uchiha clan? As if. If Naruto would realize one thing, it's that the Byakugan is inferior to the Sharingan and Rinnegan eyes. Compared to Naruto and his Reaper eyes, the Rinnegan and Sharingan are the second and third strongest blo bloodline in Kanoha. And Naruto may be a god, but unlike most other gods, he is kind and humble, and only uses his power for the right reasons. Never personal gain and without Shinigami or Kami-sama approval first. Such is, and always has been the universal law of the gods for centuries. And the Hyuga clan elders had just invoked the wrath of their own god. Fate. By one of their branch members nearly killing the angel of destiny, his angel. And now, because of that, hell would soon be raised within the Hyuga clan. And it wouldn't be pretty either. Hinata had woken up and noticed that Naruto was fast asleep on the chair next to her, and as though he hadn't left her side at all. She then noticed a strange looking staff next to her bed, and when she grabbed it, it glowed a brilliant white light which surrounded and covered her completely. When the light faded, she realized that she had grown a pair of wings. Her hair was now blonde and came down to her waist, and she was wearing a halo. At first, she thought she had died, but then she remembered what Naruto said at the preliminary rounds of being the Angel of Destiny. To think that Kami would bestow such a title upon her of all people. She then sat up and tried flapping her wings which woke Naruto up. Naruto then looked at Hinata with the largest smile ever and said, Well, 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 it seems like someone's feeling a lot better and will make a full recovery. You had me worried there, my dearest angel of destiny. What do you say we pay your clan elders a little visit? They've been praying to me for a few days now and I, they want you to make a swift recovery. I refused to answer until you would wake up and transcend to your angel form. Like my god form, you have many unique abilities. I can predict the future and see a person's fate before it happens, resurrect the dead, and even bring the dead back to life. You, however, have the ability to control a person's destiny or even alternate, if you so choose to. Your staff has the ability to give life, just as easily as my sword lets me take life away. We were fated to be together, Hinata-chan. And you probably have already seen our destiny together in the future, am I right? Hinata nodded yes and was shocked that she had powers over giving life back to those who would not deserve to die and could predict the person's destiny just by coming into contact with them, even alter destiny itself. 
Hinata then stretched her wings and grabbed the hold of Naruto as they teleport themselves to the Hyuga clan compound. Meanwhile, at the Hyuga clan compound, Hiyashi was furious. He warned Neji what would happen if he was to try and insult fate, and now half of his clan, not just the elders alone, were dead. Hiyashi then said, Neji, I can understand that you have every right to be mad at me for not telling you the truth about your father's death, but that's no reason to try and kill my daughter, your own cousin. I refuse to use that cage bird seal on your forehead as punishment, but whatever Naruto and Hinata, who may I remind you are God and angel of fate and destiny, decide is on your head, not mine. Pray that they be merciful and spare you and the Branch House family. You're dismissed. After Neji had left, Naruto and Hinata had showed up in Hiyashi's office behind him, and when he turned around, when he saw when, when what he saw struck unimaginable fear into him. There in front of him was Naruto in his god form, with armor on, white plating, and red lining all over it. An image would have been provided by the author, but I can't exactly provide it because I'm not trying to edit anything. And anyways, Hinata would be in her angel form. Just think of something that you would see in Genshin Impact. Blonde hair, like a halo, wings, um, a breasts out, kind of, barely even being covered, and a lot of skin showing. Yep, sure. Anyways, needless to say that, Hiyashi was now down on his knees begging for mercy and forgiveness, as he was unaware that his clan elders had rigged the preliminary round section. And Naruto said, summon your council of the Endler clans. It's time they realize who's truly in charge of fate and destiny. That nobody preaches about it without praying to Hinata-chan or myself and tries to play God as a result. Greed makes people like the village council do dangerous things and mess with forces beyond which they cannot even comprehend. Your clan elders will be judged should they all be found guilty. And Hiyashi said, I understand, Fate-sama. Do what you must to keep the peace and be rid of corruption. The clan elders must die, am I right? And Naruto said, Hinata-chan, are they destined to die or destined to be shown mercy and banished from the clan? Hinata then closed her eyes as if looking into the future and what she saw made her feel no remorse or regret. She then said, Their punishment will be a merciful one, carried out by the clan head my father, exiled from the Hyuga clan, never to use the Hyuga clan name ever again. Their position on the council will be stripped from them, and the cage bird steel placed upon them while Neji and the entire Branch Faust family is freed from the cage bird seal. The two houses will become one, and the old ways denounced and replaced with a new tradition. That is their destiny, she would say. And Naruto said, Well then, there you have it, Lord Hiyashi Hyuga. Your clan's council elders will be spared from deaths. Embrace it instead. They are destined to remove from the clan and never return. Quite a merciful punishment in you if you ask me, don't you think? Because personally, I'd have killed them after judgment was carried out. And Hiyashi said, Very well, Fate-sama. Lady Destiny, I shall carry out the punishment for their actions. Since it is your will, it shall be done. And thank you for sparing my nephew and his family. I should have told them the truth from the start. Naruto saying, Lord Hiyashi, if you could have one last moment with your wife and your brother, and I told you that I can make that happen, what would you do in return for me performing this selfless act of kindness? And Hiyashi said, y You can do that? Is that how you brought your parents back from the dead? Your bloodline let you resurrect them. Please tell me this is not a joke. And Naruto said, It's a god I never joke when I say that I can bring someone or someone else who has died back to the land of the living. I have the power and I must be approved by Kami and Shinigami-sama. So I ask again, Hiyashi Yuga, what is it you will do in return for me bringing your wife and brother back from the dead? And Hiyashi said, I'd I do anything you ask. Whatever it is, just name it and I'll have it done in an instant. Hinata said, you will remove the caged bird seal from Neji and every other branch house family member that has been enslaved by our family for years now. Failure to do so will result in your own death as compensation for the lives of mother and uncle Hiyashi. Are we clear, father? Hiyashi just bowed before his daughter and future son-in-law and said, we have an agreement. I shall call the elders immediately and inform them that they are being charged with clan treason and being judged by the god of fate and angel of destiny. An hour or so later, the clan elders showed up to Hiyashi's office for their meeting, or what would rather, they would see 
Naruto and Hinata, as fear would be struck into them and immediately Lord Hiyashi would perform that is very very same thing. They could practically all feel the combined killing intent of Naruto and Hinata weighing down on them, so heavy in fact that just a simple glance into those eyes, those eyes of the grim reaper of Kanoha, any sane person would know to either accept death's embrace or even beg for mercy. Naruto then reached out for his aunt Pakuto, but before he could draw his sword, Hinata put her hand on his and said, Naruto-kun, this is a clan matter. Your fate, I'm destiny. But you aren't of the Hyuga clan family. Let me handle this, okay, my love? Naruto then said, fine, make it quick, so we can revive your mother and uncle. Don't go easy on them with your judgment either. Naruto then transformed back into his human form and walked out of the office. Hinata in her angel form then raised her staff and the clan owners watched the staff as it lit up as bright as a sun and she would then slam it on the, on the floor and say, Destiny Art! Judgment Barrier of Consequence! While inside this barrier, your very soul shall be mercifully judged by me. I have the powers to alter your destiny and give life back just as easily as Naruto-kun could take it from you. I am destiny incarnate. As we speak your destiny within the clan, it's all being altered. Your punishment for rigging the Chunin exam selection of the preliminary rounds is exile from the Hyuga clan. Yours to be stripped from the rank and title as council members of the clan. And upon your exile from this place, you are forbidden from ever talking the Hyuga clan family name. In this or any other village ever again. Destiny art. Light of judgment. A bright light then appeared over the elders' heads first. It was white, but then the elders were fearing as the situation couldn't get any worse. The white light turned pitch black, indicating that they are all guilty beyond saving, and that the punishment was to be carried out as ordered. Hinata then said, It seems that you have all been found guilty by the light of destiny. And the light of destiny is never wrong. The punishment is exile. So says I, the angel of destiny as Hinata would slam her staff on the floor once again, and the elders vanished to a place where nobody could reach them. They were sent to the hidden cloud village in Lightning Country, a fate far worse than death itself. Hayashi smirked as if knowing exactly where his daughter had sent them and said, You sent them to the hidden cloud village, didn't you, Hinata? A fitting punishment for them considering that they sent my own brother there for the good of the clan when it was only to benefit themselves. A very fitting punishment if you ask me. Naruto then walked back in and said, If we're done here, could we please get a move on so we can bring your mother and uncle back from the land of the living? And Hinata said, Of course my love, my dearest god of fate, anything for you. I wanted to test the power of mine anyways. And so, with all the Hyuga clan elders banished from the cloud, they would go to their cemetery and found themselves at the graves of Hiyashi's wife Hitomi and his brother Hizashi. They would soon be a family once again, and Naruto would be able to meet his future mother-in-law. Everyone got what they wanted and would live happily ever after in the end. Or would they? Chapter 16 A mother and daughter reunited, and a brother's bond restored. Naruto, Hinata, and Hisashi were standing at the Konoha Cemetery, the gravestones of Hitomi and Hisashi Yuga. They were all about to be revived from the dead, and Naruto and Hinata as Hiyashi's hopes were very high with anticipation. And Hinata sat in the lotus position and placed her weapons over the top of each other. Naruto and Hinata saying, By the powers of fate and destiny and the good graces of Kami and Shinigami, we hereby declare you, Hitomi and Hisashi Yuga, to be revived. The ground shook and the coffins of Hitomi and Hisashi Yuga rose up from the ground, opening up when they stepped out into the light, and what they saw made them both bow in fear and reverence. There standing before them was the god of fate and the angel of destiny Hitomi. Hitomi already knew that the angel of destiny was her daughter Hinata, but because of the mask she didn't know who the god of fate really was. So she asked, Fatesama, could you please let me see your face? If you are who I think you are, then you are then you are then Kami and Shinigami. Then, then if you are who you think you are, then Kami and Shinigami sama couldn't have chosen a more kind hearted person. Hinata, my dearest daughter, I know that is your dear angel of destiny form, but please show me the real you. Both of you. And Naruto and Hinata turned back into their human form, and when she saw who fate was, she nearly died all over again. When she looked into those innocent blue eyes and blonde hair, she then said, y You're Minato and Kushina's son, but then that means you have revived them as well. H how's that possible? And Naruto said, Long story short, I can bring back people from the dead, or revive someone who has been dead for less than 30 minutes. You could say that I'm the Grim Reapers incarnate. Because I can see the future, 
judge a person's soul, and even take their souls with my Zanpakuto, and anyone else who might take it from me, loses their soul instead. You were an innocent soul who died far too early in life. He told me and you, Hizashi, though what you did for your brother here was a noble thing to do, it wasn't the smartest thing. After your death, Hizashi's heart grew cold and emotionless, and Neji's heart became filled with hatred and resentment towards his own family, and nearly killed Hinata-chan in the Chunin exam's preliminary rounds. I took her place and defeated Neji without killing him. The clan elders have been judged by Hinata-chan and sent away to the Hidden Cloud Village, never to return or take the Hyuga clan name ever again. Your clan's council had grown into corrupted and tried to force themselves into power, but in state, fate and destiny put an end to that. We put an end to that. Right, my dearest Hinata? And Hinata would say, yes, Naruto. It's as you said, we were fated to be together, and it is our destiny to stand by each other's side for all eternity. Now let's see how my new power works. Hinata then picked up her staff and slammed it into the ground. Hitomi and Hizashi were curious about what Hinata was doing until they saw her staff light up as bright as the sun and she said, Destiny art! Revival of the innocent! Become pure of heart once more and bring back the gears of which I have been take of which have been taken from you. Hitomi and Hizashi felt their bodies heat up and life returned to their bodies. When Hinata handed each of them a mirror, they realized they had truly gained back the years they lost after dying. They were young again. Hitomi even felt like she was able to run a marathon around the village. Hitomi then asked, How is this even possible, Hinata? What, what did you do to us? And Hinata said, You can never age or take away from that which was innocent and pure of heart, to begin with. Once pure of heart in life, always pure of heart in the afterlife. The choices you both made in life affected Kami-sama's decision whether or not to bring you back to the land of the living. In essence, you both have a second chance at life, to make things right with your friends and loved ones. So don't screw it up this time, or we can't bring you back a second time. The Uchiha clan aren't dead, if you're wondering. Naruto-kun made sure of that, because Naruto could see into the future events, and he was able to inform the Kage of them before they would happen, thus changing fate for those people or that person. Does that answer all your questions? Hitomi and Hizashi just dumbly nodded their heads yes, and then looked at Naruto, then back to Hinata and Naruto again. After suddenly processing everything that just happened, Hitomi remembered something and thought to herself, wait a minute, Naruto called Hinata his dearest angel of destiny, and Hinata called Naruto her beloved god of fate, but that means that they're, I'm going to be, and they're going to be getting uh, I can't do it. I'm sorry. Like that, that, That's just such a girly thing. I, I, My voice physically can't get that high. Anyways, I'm going to be a mother-in-law. And they're going to get married in the future. Hitomi then went up to Naruto and Hinata and congratulated them on their future together. As she hugged Naruto and said that she's glad to have him as part of the family. Son-in-law. And that she's glad that he found a kind-hearted girl like my daughter to be his future wife. Asking, when's the wedding? Naruto activating his reaper eyes looking into the future and said... Six years from now, when we're both at the age of consent to have children. If you want to, that is, Hinata, I wouldn't force a decision upon you that you are already, that you are not ready to make yet. And Hinata said, when you're ready, I'm ready, Naruto. I'd love to have a family with you, but I won't force that decision upon you. After this, after, um, after this, he would say, let's get married first in three years from now instead. And then we will take another three years to think about maybe having children. I don't want to rush things too quickly. And so, with all the future plans for Naruto and Hinata to firstly get married and then decide about when to start their new family together, the group would leave the cemetery and go back to the Yuga clan compound. Hitomi then said to Hisashi with a look that said, I know everything husband and I'm not pleased with you at all. Hisashi didn't need any words to express what he knew. He was definitely screwed and he knew that. Hizashi ducked his head in shame, and Hizashi just chuckled knowing that by now, his brother and wife had been around each other long enough to know what they were both thinking. And based on the looks given to each other, and then him, the brothers knew they would receive hell from the Hyuga Moderage, and wouldn't be pleased either. From here, we're going to the next chapter, which is... If the thing could load, why is it not... Hold on, there it is. Anyways, chapter 17, three years later. Naruto and Hinata's eternal wedding. It's been three years now since Naruto and Hinata decided to get married, and the entire village was in an uproar about it. Anyone and everyone who knew would tell their friends. 
Well, naturally, Ino Yamanaka was the one who spread the word like wildfire. The dumb blonde couldn't keep her mouth shut even for one moment, without casually ruining a surprise if her life depended on him. Which she knew actually did. Knowing what Naruto and Hinata were scared the shit out of her, and as much as she swore she wouldn't tell a soul, quite literally in fact, since Naruto made it a point to take the soul of anyone else besides friends and family, well, let's just say that a lot of people, and then far too many souls to take, which was the entire village. Why did Naruto want to keep this secret you might be wondering? It's simple really, because they were having it as was well, because where they were having it was considered sacred ground, a place where only gods and angels and those truly trusted were allowed to. Enter a place that was so sacred it was considered forbidden place where no man and child to ever wander, unless they had died. The wedding was being held in the heavens, and the only way to get there was through a shrine built by the gods in honor of a new god of pantheon, in this case, Naruto, and by his extent, his soon-to-be wife Hinata Hyuga, the Angel of Destiny. We now find the Konoha 12 and Hyuga and Uzumaki Namikaze, along with Tazuna and his family and Tsunade Shizune and Jiraiya at Naruto's shrine in the wave country. Naruto then said, you may all, you may all want to close your eyes for this part. Hinata. Please put your right hand on this angel statue while I put my left on the god statue and turn the spiral clockwise and then counterclockwise when I say so. Ready? One, two, three. Pretty much what this seems like to me is that they just get married and I'm pretty sure you guys don't really want to hear about that, right? I'm pretty sure you guys don't really care about that. Anyways, though, the six paths would be the person who performs the thing, and basically, it would be a very, very, very like joyous wedding. Hinata's all like, "Oh, I chose you because he's selfless and puts others before himself." You know, basically all the all the cheesy stuff. It's a very, very long chapter of them just getting married, but I'm pretty sure you guys don't really want to hear that stuff, right? Come on, now. like y'all, 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 all about the action. I think I know y'all, considering that. I've been making videos for y'all and I read the comments. <sighs> Anyways, Naruto and Hinata's honeymoon three years later. It's been three years now since Naruto and Hinata's been married and they started planning their honeymoons. Pretty much what ends up happening this chapter is a honeymoon and ah uh, dude, come on now, I was expecting a little bit more action me boy, I was expecting a little bit more action. Uh, oh, that's awesome. Hinata and Sakura both get pregnant pretty much. <laughs> Anyways. Next chapter, chapter 19, Saving the Jinchuriki. Naruto and Hinata were currently traveling across the elemental nations for their honeymoon, and they were currently in the waterfall village when they saw a girl with mint green hair and tan skin was of, was, well, this was Fu, of the seven-tailed stag, stag beetle. She was currently being chased by a mob of villagers, and Naruto couldn't help but think of the way he used to be treated like that. Before Hinata had stopped Naruto, he had already gone into God of Fate mode and approached the crowd. Thinking that this person was also here to kill her, she feared for her life. But what happened next, even she couldn't believe. This person, whoever he was, pulled out a strange looking sword and watched as the godlike man in front of her eyes, as cold as death itself, said, Fu of the Seven Tailed Beetle. It is not your fate to die. Go find destiny. She is my wife, and we're on our honeymoon throughout the nations. Or at least, we were. Run and don't look back. Thankful for the safe and chance to escape, she took it and didn't even look back. Naruto then looked at the crowd of people and said, I am God of Fate. I know all, see all, and predict all. And for attacking an innocent girl for keeping you people safe, you have invoked my wrath. Fate art. Chains of fate and destiny. A giant yin yang circle appeared around the crowd as it would set chains upon the ground and wrap around them as much as they would try to get free, but it was futile. They were trapped and thus it truly was the god of fate. They knew that they were guilty of the action they just committed and that would probably cause their deaths. Naruto then said, where is your village leader? He should be protecting that poor girl for what she contains, no matter, uh, for what she contains. No matter though, I'll find out what's going on myself. Circle of fate and destiny, what has the universe decided, guilty or innocent? Just then, both the yin and yang symbol lit up and Naruto said, 
Well, that's a first. Normally, the circle judges people on the actions that are reflected on their own souls. This is the first time I've seen it unable to decide. Very well, then. Circle of fate and destiny. Shall I let destiny and Fu of the seven-tailed beetle decide their fates? The circle of fate and destiny then disappeared, indicating that Fu should decide the crowd's punishment. And Naruto said, Very well. Fu, what do you think is the best punishment for this? Rest assured, should you choose guilty, they will lose their souls. Choose innocent, and they live to see another day. What do you decide? Fu then said, I'm grateful for you saving me from them. But they hate the seven tails, not me. They're just too blind to see the difference. Let Lord Shibuku decide. For now, I reserve judgment. Naruto then sheathed the sword and said, Very well then. If judgment is being reserved as the god of fate, I cannot make their souls or spare them. They shall remain bound by the chains that I have placed upon them until a proper decision is reached. Naruto then grabbed the chains and dragged the crowd of people and asked Fu where the village leader's office is at. Fu taking him to him and Lord Shibaku was at his office at the center of the village. My bad y'all for that loud engine. I could take you there if you'd like. And Naruto said, that would be great, thanks. I have a proposal for him and if he's in agreement with me, you won't have to be here anymore. We want to take you to a safer place, a place where nobody can harm you, a place where you can be able to make many friends. As Fu's eyes would light up and the thought of being able to make lots of friends, stars would light up in her eyes. As she asked where they're going to be taking her, as it sounds incredible, Hinata said, why well, Kanoha of course. You will be a whole lot safer there, and everyone's friendly. You see, Naruto-kun isn't just the god of fate. He's also the Jinchuriki, just like you. He contains the nine-tailed fox, so you can understand why he didn't want to see you getting attacked by those people, since he used to be treated like that as well. They reached Shibuku's office, and when they saw who was on the other side, he knew he was dead. He knew that the gods would come for him eventually. So knowing there was nothing to do but accept fate and braith, he said, Come in, Fu, and please tell your god friends not to worry. I'll take care of those villagers and- <clears throat> Naruto then grabbed Shibuku by his throat and said, Listen good and well, mortal Shibuku. As a fellow shinobi and Jinchuriki, I know that you haven't done much to keep Fu safe. The third Hokage did the same for me. He died of cancer. So here's what will happen. I'm Naruto Uzumaki. Son of the reinstated fourth Hokage Minato Namikaze and Red Death of Kanoha Kushina Uzumaki. I will be sending a request to have Kanoha Ambu Black Ops come and get Fu and bring her to the Hidden Leaf, where she will be welcome with open arm. You will agree to this or I will burn your weak village to the ground as its poor defenses and the Akatsuki after her to the ground. Am I understood? Shibuku could tell that he was serious and wouldn't joke about something like this, so for the good of the village, he agreed to Naruto and his demands and said, I I'm sorry Naruto-sama, <laughs> I didn't mean to let things get out of hand. My village council howls more powerful than I poor power than I have, what more do you expect me to do? Naruto just groaned in annoyance and said, again with village leaders and their power hungry council. Is there a single village leader that isn't afraid of their council? Smashing at the table, as Naruto then punched a large hole in the office wall and Shibuku asked, Fu, what's his problem with the village councils? And Fu said, oh, not much really. He just hates people who have too much political influence over their leaders. He's a Jinchuriki of the Nine-Tailed Fox, so I'd get the council in line before this Konoha Anbu Black Ops show up. Bye-bye. Oh, right. I almost got the villagers who attacked me. Their judgment is guilty. Hearing this, Naruto snapped his fingers and the chains binding the villagers glowed a black aura, draining their souls from their bodies as they would fall to the floor dead. The chains then vanished and Naruto said, Let's go, Fu. The Anbu should be here by now. Don't worry. They're same Anbu who protected me. You can trust them. The Anbu escorts were then waiting for the village gates for Fu as Naruto said, Stay on guard. The Akatsuki are still out there somewhere, waiting. Protect her with your lives or I'll be sure to take them from you if you don't. Fu then said, You heard the man, I'm considered a double S-class escort mission, but I'm not helpless. I just choose to not use my tailed beast power. And the cat masked Anbu said, Don't worry, Naruto-sama. She's in good hands. We will not fail you. 
Naruto and Hinata then continued their one year honeymoon across the elemental nations and the next village they would come across however would be that of the Akatsuki, the hidden rain village and Naruto personally couldn't wait. He never told his wife this but he was given a mission by Jiraiya and Minato to find the other eight Jinjuriki and have them sent to Kanoha while hunting down the Akatsuki and killing them if necessary. If Hinata knew this she would have protested against it but she couldn't afford to lose Naruto. Not now, nor ever. They had made an eternal vow when they got married to be together forever, through thick and thin. But if there's two people Naruto wanted to test his powers against, it's against Janist, it's against the Jashinist, Hidan, and Lord Pain, Nagato Uzumaki. Claiming to be immortal in his book was an insult to those of gods and goddesses like him. And Hinata, it's time to learn what a real god is. I mean, not Hinata. It's time the Akatsuki learned what a real god was. And he would kill them all just to have his revenge for what happened to his parents the night he was born. He wanted Madara Uchiha and Obito's heads. One way or another, he would get them. Chapter 20. So, following everything that would end up happening, Naruto would end up uh, searching through the lands during his honeymoon phase. And when he would encounter the Akatsuki members, one by one using his brand new abilities granted to him by Shinigami and Fate herself, Naruto using his chains of judgment would judge each and every single one of the Akatsuki members, only a couple actually being deemed innocent, Deidara being one of them due to the fact that he truly only wanted to show off his art. Itachi Uchiha would be spared as well, considering that he was never a part of the Akatsuki so that really didn't really matter right I, I don't know why that was and even even pointed out in the story but regardless what ends up happening following this is that all the rest of the Akatsuki members would be judged as guilty the ones that remained of course and would all be handled by the hand of fate and destiny and with that ladies and gentlemen the story of what if Naruto was the wielder of the Shinigami's eye or what if Naruto had the Reaper's Dojutsu finally concludes. This has actually been one of my more longer stories that I've done in the channel in a while. So if you guys are here in the movie version and you guys are watching this and you saw the whole thing through, definitely consider leaving a like on this video as it helps so much with the YouTube algorithm. And if you enjoyed it, let me know what your favorite part of the, what was in the comment section and make sure to check out Aaron Hansel, the creator of this awesome, awesome idea comment down below leave him a comment you know just talk to him he's on wattpad and you can get there via internet so you don't even have to download the app so just show him some support considering he was the awesome author who let me tell you guys this incredible incredible story that said though ladies and gentlemen as always it has been your boy zether and i am out peace